Gentlemen, welcome children, cousins, sisters, brothers, oh. everyone of all oh. walks of life, welcome. Oh my god. I, I'm, I'm inviting extraterrestrials, I'm inviting reptilians, Okay. government officials, yeah. politicians, the whole game. mothers, I said that, doctors, so lawyers, we should get some lawyers in the audience. We yeah. should. Gamers Couple above all lawyer. else. Above all else, yep. the gamers. Yep. Oh, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. The gamers. Welcome to the Poorly Played stream. Uh, it's a musical stream, of course. Holy That's so shit. fucking loud. What Why'd the... you do that? Not me. It's so loud. What's up Who, with this? me? Yeah, what's up with this uh, uh, echo? I don't yeah. put no yeah. volume up. Shut Power. the fuck up. Go, go, go. <laughs> yeah, what is that <laughs> echo? I, 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 no, I've got this echo. Oh, okay. I'll turn it off. There we go. <laughs> Uh, uh, we will maybe get a wheel spin in later. Maybe. Who knows? Maybe you'll hear the timpani roll out. We've one, got the Discord open. One more again. One more again. How did that happen? Yeah. Hell yeah. We've uh, will or won't they? We've we've got our Steam Deck hooked up to the Steam Deck dock. Brian joins us. Cracking a cold Mountain Dew. Oh shit. Do the do. Mountain Dew. This Shouts out to Mountain Dew. This is the new flavor. Gamer original. Fuel. Original gamer. Uh, to fuel up your gamer, get your energy. Original. Mm -hmm. Let's do a taste test. Yeah, have a little sip. 
I'm having a little coffee. Mm. Nothing special. That's you know very me. good. I love Mountain Dew. You know, uh, the Regals and I'm... the Edwards have Mountain Dew slushies. They do. Trisha gets those. And now, does she always... Now, you got to think about this. All okay, right. I'm thinking about it. Because I said it before, but you Say have to remember the mixy moo when you go... The, I'm sorry. Are you okay? You have to. If you go into a theater and they got the slushy, you walk up and you get, and you see that they have cherry, and they have either Pepsi Mixy Moo? or this place has the Mountain Dew slushy. You get a Mixy Moo. You get yourself a Code Red Mountain Ooh, Dew, are you or you get yourself a Cherry Coke slushy. Mixy Moo. The fucking Mixy Moo. But you have to tell them when you order it. This. When you order it, you say, "Yeah, can I get a large slushy?" But can I get a mixy moo of the Mountain Dew? Is and this the something cherry? Andrew says? Absolutely. Yeah, of course. <laughs> I knew it. But he said he said it once, and I always say it. And now they know what you're talking about when you say, "Can I get a mixy moo?" No, because I go to different places. Anywhere I go, I, if I insane. want two things combined, I ask them for a mixy moo. You guys like spit All, in your food? No, no. See, I think if you ask them for a mixy moo, they laugh. <laughs> I don't, I don't think they hear that and go, fuck this guy. I think they hear it and they go, know, all, dude, all right, I'll, I'll uh, get you a mixy moo. You're brave, dude. <laughs> Mix my moo. You know, I'm always polite about it. You're very polite. Yeah, you you're, you're a nice guy. Um, <laughs> I've been meaning to start this game for so long. I bought this game uh, pretty much when I got my Steam Deck finally. I really? Was, I was like, okay, I, I, this. I just started hearing about this game. Uh, let me check it out on my brand new Steam Deck. And then, you know... I'm just, like with the Switch, I'm not much of a portable game user. Yeah. Um, and I loved my Vita. I loved the PSP yeah. before it. And I feel like maybe when I had more of a 9-to-5 job, I would, on lunch breaks, use a handheld. Yes. 3DS, you know, uh, Me too. DSi before that. Game Boy SP. God, man. I mean, like, I always had a portable on my lunch break or on my break, I squeeze in a little bit of gaming. But now, you know, I'm just here at Mega64 all day. I, I'm i really only playing PS5 stuff, really. I yeah. mean, to be honest, you know, um, Trisha bounces between her Xbox pretty well, but, man, I never use the thing. Yeah. Uh, and then the Steam Deck is, like, my Switch. It's just been sitting there collecting dust, so... I'm glad that I dusted it off. Yeah. And there was a fucking layer, dude. There was a dust layer on both. I set everything up. Like, I obsessively want to keep everything charged at all times. Right. So everything's, like, in this rotation of being charged, and then I don't use it. Even my Vita and my 3DS, I'm, like, keeping those charged all the time. Really? I don't know if it's good for them, honestly. No, probably not if you're not using them at all. Um, I mean, uh, it's better. I go than... in. It's, like, every six months I'll unplug it, and I'll look at it and go, okay, plug it in for our... You know, for for a day and then unplug it again and then check it in again in another six months. You really are the guy at the fucking Jesper Mall. Keep the, I am. I'm really. I really am. Oh, you know what I thought of too? Shit. How fun would it do? Would it be because that's an Amazon Prime thing to do a watch party of Jasper Mall? Oh yeah. We could easily do that here on the PPS. Oh, if you wanted to, that'd be sick. Yeah, we talked about it for so long. We could do it in chunks. You know, we can watch yeah. like the first part tonight or something. Yeah, half want. hour or whatever. Yeah. If you want to split it into. I don't know how that works. If you could just switch over to a watch party, or maybe my yeah. VOD would be weird on YouTube then. No. Nah, maybe that has to be a special event thing. No, I don't. Th I don't think I it can't re-upload it to YouTube though. You would just change your game category halfway through to a watch through and, and connect it. I don't know how it would come through though. I wonder if it would show it. Well, again, it's all through Amazon, so if it's included, then I assume it's part of the, you know, the thing. This is cool. This kind of looks like Metal Gear. That's this game reminded me. It had things in the reviews and not even reviews. I didn't look at reviews. I just looked at gameplay footage. People were saying it was good. And that it had this mm, kind of throwback style, but it was very cyberpunky, yeah. almost, um, Blade Runnery. But it has all this stuff that kind of reminds me of something between or akin to Metal Gear and Resident Evil. Yeah. I just get those PS One game vibes. I heard a it. lot of Resident Evil comparisons, so the, I've I've been True. eager to check this out myself, but I haven't. Uh, just I mean, I haven't had the time to sit down and play it. We're gonna but, begin anew. Okay, um, but just like you, I actually had been playing my Steam Deck out. recently. Yeah, uh, I just finished Killer Seven, which honestly, like, the more I think about it, I don't. I'm probably not going to get every game on there, 
but I do like the idea of getting certain games on the Steam Deck because certain games that I that are like a book, you know what I mean? That I would like take with me somewhere um, to be able to like pick up uh, and play at home too sure. if I wanted. Okay, uh, I see that. Yeah, because it's it's really it's really cool how you can actually do that with the Steam Deck. Like they basically took your entire Steam library and said, okay, now you can take it anywhere. Yeah. So uh, I mean, right. Certain that, retro huge. games, it might be better to just put it on there. Retro and, games, stuff that is like an NES game. Like, the emulation, I think, would be good to pick up and play, like, when I have five minutes or wherever. Honestly, like, that's a great sitting on the toilet game. I'm sorry, but, like, no, exactly. NES, like, if you had all of those original games. Sorry, I'm just I'm going to brighten up our screen here. No, you're good. It's a dark-ass game. It is, right? And I'm going to uh, just brighten it up a bit. Oh, you should enable HDR. In what? Uh, in your capture. We can do that later. It's not for today. Oh, uh, really? But but I just noticed uh, you you had it unchecked for a while. That wasn't a feature that uh, that it had. It might help with the darkness. That you couldn't do that. Because ah. mm -hmm. it because it might be outputting an HDR signal. I just never thought it will. Pr yeah, I don't know. I just never I thought know, like my know. computer could handle that. Where do you see that? Enable HDR. It might Ooh. not be possible on yours. But oh look, did it change it? Did it get super bright? Yeah, look at it. It's gray went to like green. Yeah, the colors show a little bit more. I wonder. I'll keep it off for now, because that seemed, honestly, off. I know HDR's on with the PS5, but I don't know about the Steam Deck. I really know very little, because oh, I haven't used the damn point, thing good point. for much. But I know this is also a quiet game, so I was tempted to, like, boost, the game boost audio. that game audio. Tell me, though, guys, if it's uh, too much. You know, I'll turn it yeah, down. Yeah, let us know. I, uh, I really like using the Steam Deck. Uh, honestly, handheld, it's a little bit painful. I can kind of rest it on a knee. Yeah, I, like you can't hold it like you would a switch. It's a little heavy. It I was sits playing... across my legs really nice. Yeah, that or if you get like a pillow or you know like a gamer pillow, uh, yeah. like that, that that Halo thing you used to have. What was that like desk thing that you had for gaming? There's a oh, it's like a food tray to yeah. eat, eat food in bed. <laughs> Is that what that was? Oh, yeah, I thought yeah. it was like a gamer. You get those pillow. at like IKEA. Oh, I, I totally thought that was a, like so a gamer pillow. I've seen these before where they just they're basically like one of the. They're shaped like a neck pillow that you would wear oh, on a flight. Really? But it's around the front. So you rest your arms here, and it's fatter on the back. So when you put your arms down, oh, really? it's like this. Some people just put, like, a pillow or some well, plush or I've whatever. been having a thing where, like, you know, my fucking thumb, uh, for my D-pad thumb on the right hand, it goes numb when I'm playing yeah. Elden Ring now. Yeah. And it used to be I'd have the back of my hands, the back of my, Happens like, my pinky... Left. And my index finger go numb, and yeah. then I kind of have to adjust my grip, and I'm like, yeah. am I cutting off blood flow somewhere? What's up? Yeah, that's that. Uh, Ryan Ryan told me a while ago because I told him about that. I'm like, should I be concerned with this? Like, is this nerve problems? And he's like, no, the way you're. Do we have holding, neuropathy issues. <laughs> no, just the way we hold our controller, we're probably not realizing we're squeezing or doing some sort of like pressure in a point that cuts off the circulation. Yeah. So we just lose. Get up there, ho. Um. You know, they lose. We uh, lose GF asks if those gamer pillows are good. I Honestly, if you use handhelds on the couch a lot, it is going to be better for you because you don't have to hold it up like this. Like, no matter what, after a while, anything I'm playing with, like, if you're playing it like this, your arms will get tired and you do this, right? Like, no matter what, you'll try to do like this for a little bit. Yeah. But you're going to get tired, you're going to slouch, and eventually you'll do this. With a, just a, you just need a pillow or a cushion. It doesn't need to be a fucking, like, you a know, branded a, a brand new, a brand new thing for it. I yeah, just throw a pillow. A pillow. Do a throw or a, pillow. Or a giant, like, plush or something. Like, and you just put it there. It's nicer because you're just resting. On, yeah. You know? Um, um, hey, so we woke up in the maintenance bay of this ship. Yes. It is a spaceship. Um, I can kind of tell from the map. It's got a maintenance bay and a, a lower hatch. And, and uh, we found what seems to be a, a manual. The Penrose-type vessel mm -hmm. of the Isuian People's Navy, our low-cost space exploration vessels, deployed beyond the solar system's edge in search of planets and moons fit for habitation or rich in natural resources to support the continuous growth of our great nation. Ooh, our great nation. Ooh. They're all proud of themselves. All Penrose vessels are piloted by a Gestalt scout officer supported by a land survey ship technician, replica or an LSTR. I think that's what I am. I'm like a android. 
Okay. This partner system of the of the Gestalt Replica Cooperation has proved successful in countless of previous scout operations. Mutual control and support allow the Gestalt officer and the technician replica to perform at the optimum capacity. So let me find my Gestalt officer because I'm the I'm the replicant or replica. Excuse me. That's interesting. No infringement. Once the vessel is catapulted towards the edge of the solar system by an orbital mass driver, the pilot may adjust the course from the flight deck while the replica will take care of a mechanical maintenance of the vessel. All right. So that's our role. And that's uh, to set up where the game has kind of started us. Mm. And now it seems like it's time to explore. This is a... Everything's in German, I think. Primrose. Penrose and Gestalt and Frigabi. Does that mean fridge? Fridge? Is this like a. Oops. Diagnostic system for the cry. Oh, it is a cryogenic capsule. Okay. Huh. I like it. Um... And a keypad. So this is in the back of the ship. Oh, cool. It tells me dead ends. Interactive map. I like this. And it opens as we go. That's. Uh... Okay. The rooms are very small. Yeah, that was I kind of like that. Yeah, one thing I didn't really realize was like, okay, it was going to have these interesting small... It reminds me of like a Zelda dungeon. Yeah. The Gasol officer's sleeping bunk. He's not there. I like already that this looks like a PS1 game. Yeah. Um, and I like that it looks like a... Uh, also a Game Boy game. <laughs> yeah oh god dude you're kind of right <laughs> like it's got this i i'm i'm kind of coming back to liking this kind of art style in certain applications because now i've said it before on the show nowadays like you can really nail the style but not have it be dependent on how the game functions like back in the day Hmm. The way that games used to work were so weird. Like, it would be you're slotting a number in here to to be relative to this value and to save space. You're doing this, 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 and this, or this, that, and, and the third, right? So there are all these limitations. Now you're developing a game with a modern engine and computing power of a computer. So you can make a 32 or 16 bit looking game. I think that's as bright as I can get it. But that looks yeah. pretty that looks pretty natural. It's just super bright on my screen. Yeah. Anyway, anyway yeah, yeah. You can make that It does have that kind of Game Boy Advance style. Like this could have been on Game Boy Advance. Y yeah, right, but it would not have run this well. No, it would not be right? snappy. It would have been like the figure would have been like literally a stick. There would have been no dynamic lighting. There wouldn't have been any sort of like uh, 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 panache, you know, a like actual like tone setting. It just would have been like a dumbed down version of yeah. something else. You know what it kind of reminds me of is like Resident Evil Deadly Silence on the 3DS. Oh yeah, because fuck, I forgot about this game. game. Goes into these first person modes like that game would go into when you uh, come in contact with a zombie and you have to yeah. slash or shoot them. It would go into like an optional that game first ruled. person mode. Yeah, it was. It was just a remake of the first game, but I with that optional stuff. And yeah. this this game has that. Like, I'll go into this room right here. This is the airlock. Um, and now we are in first person. I don't know if you can tell. Like, I'm moving with the analog yeah. stick my oh, head. Oh, wow. That's And then sick. I'm moving th this around. And if I click forward, it's like... Ooh. Now... It's like mist. Like, you have to click forward and look at stuff. Now, uh, let, let, me, let me ask this, because uh, you are using a PS5 controller. Can That's you right. control that crosshair with the touchpad no okay but some games do let you do that if it if it has like mouse support it will let you use use the touchpad oh yeah. that's fucking cool on, when, when you're on your uh menu and you're using that you can actually use the t uh, the um that as it on desktop mode. as the on desktop thing uh -huh. that's so cool i'm 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 really happy with the steam deck like Me I'm, too. i am glad i got it uh, especially that first gen um yeah which one did you end up getting uh, the big boy. I got the big baby. Okay, I got the middle. I got the middle one because I figured anything that I would want, I would just get a flash card for. But I got the one that definitely had the SSD and the fast loading. And, sure, sure. And all, 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 it's the same as yours, but the internal hard drive is half the size. Oh shit! Because it was like this looks like the Sulaco. It was much, much, much less expensive. That yeah. Way. <laughs> this is this is. Oh damn! I backed out. 
This is kind of, it reminds me of the ship in Alien, like their cockpit. Where it was so bulky and like, how the fuck do you even get in there? The port controls panel have been critical system failure due to a hard landing. Oh, so we're on a planet. Oh, yeah. yeah, look at the snow out there. You crash landed like in Returnal. You crash land, the system's fucked, the mm -hmm. control panels are jank. Judging by the readout, there's no chance we'll ever fly again. Oh, my God. Aww. This one's even broken. Look at that. The starboard control panel cracked. Uh, not responding to any input. Okay, interesting. Brian, I do see our dear friend Vector is on. Oh, from yeah. Afterlife Games on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. And Twitter. And Twitter, yeah. That's uh, right. Do you want to take that call? Yeah. Vector, how's it going? What's up? <laughs> Welcome to the show. I'm getting horny yeah. now. Just thinking about it. Wait, I didn't mean to hit that other button. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> That's for when our guests show feet. That's what we hit. I'm getting horny now. Just thinking about we it. We hit that one. <laughs> I am not capable of showing feet. <laughs> well, what? I don't want you to anyway. How the hell are you? Happy New Year, Vector. Happy New Year to you guys. I've got a faded photograph. Happy New Year to uh, to all of our viewers, but most of all, you for calling in right now. Man, 2023, I feel the same. i got to admit it. Mm -hmm. Nice to be back at yeah, work. I like nice. it. I like it. Uh, I'm, I, uh, I was hoping that you guys would still be playing Elden Ring. Ah. Um, I missed my shot. I don't know if you guys have a schedule. I'm bad at Twitter. No, we don't. Um, I, I kind of pick but, uh, whatever I want to play, like, maybe an hour before I come over here. <laughs> um, oh, right on. Unless I was like, yo, I knew, like, last couple weeks I was going to definitely bring some Elden Ring in. But we'll bring it in again. Um, yeah. I think uh, I'd love to keep talking about it because I can definitely apply more knowledge to that game when i get back home so like yeah oh, are, oh hell yeah are you uh well, well, look at a the couple shadow. weeks ago somebody in chat i i forget their name but somebody in chat said something that pissed me off so much <laughs> now and, you got you I, get very <laughs> you get heated pretty yes. pretty i'm not now, gonna okay, say listen. easily but you just have triggers that they gotta watch let me for. Let, let me in my defense they might have been trolling and maybe i just took the bait Maybe. I think that's what happened was they 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 might have been trolling, but what they said was, they said Elden Ring has no story, and they just kept pressing the issue. They were like, mm. "Does this game even have a story?" <laughs> because you guys were talking about this game. I mean, uh, Elden Ring being nominated for best story uh, during the Game Awards. Sure. And um and I got really upset, you know, and I I like I really wanted to to uh, to call in and and uh, politely. Cuss Remind everyone. <laughs> I'm pretty certain um, it has a story. That's what they got George R. R. Martin to help develop. That's definitely true. But it, like, you does know, does it have like a like uh, Vector's newest video? Elden Ring doesn't yeah. story tell through cutscenes. It story tells through right. gameplay and questing, and it's baked yeah. into the actual back end and the gameplay that the user must accomplish to get the story. Yeah. Right. Uh, and which I'm working on a follow up to that video, which deals with The Last of Us, because I actually I had a chance to hang mm. out with Troy Baker over the weekend. Oh, mm. casually. Not really. He was he was a guest at a convention that I was at. <laughs> Did you go out to? <laughs> I saw everyone this last weekend was out at what Magfest? Uh, yeah, I think it was Magfest. But were you out there? No, no. This was in my hometown of okay. uh, Sack of Tomatoes. Oh, okay. Oh shit, yeah. Yeah, what it is, was cool. You know, somebody uh, what is Sac somebody at, in the audience Sacramento. asked, like, Sac Sacramento. <laughs> oh, okay. I've never heard that yeah. one. I mean, anybody who's been that's, there knows it's like it. a fucking farm town until you get to the capital, and then it's just <laughs> like so Mute City. Happy. Brian lived there for how many years? Well, I had friends who lived there, so I would have to go ah, visit yeah, them. Yeah. And if you weren't near the capital or UC Davis, yeah. it was like suburbs in Meth Town. Oh, look. Right. The surface area is a critically only, low temperature. Only place I've ever been to that fucking proudly has a place they call Old City. Sack. <laughs> that we, old sack. We we love old sack. Old sack also used to be the home of the best arcade <laughs> forever. It was underground. It was it was Ooh, seedy. You know, yeah. it was like it was really? cyberpunk as fuck. But it, but surrounding the area was this 1800s old west town. It was yeah. it was badass. Hell yeah, <laughs> with an arcade under in yeah. the basement. It's right. a really cool. Oh, old sack right. is actually really really fun to go to. It's all like dusty and oldy old west looking. Yeah. Well, it's shit now, but it, it yeah. used to be sick. Yeah, yeah. But uh, so, well, back to back to the story in in Elden Ring. Yes. Yeah. So you know, uh, like I said, I'm I'm working on this video about The Last of Us Two because somebody asked 
Troy Baker, you know, about his thoughts about the backlash to mm. The Last of Us 2's story. Hmm. And uh, Troy Baker, you know, he, he kept, like, he issued this challenge to the audience, show me a better version of that story. And, um, and so I was gonna, like, post my rewrite, but there's already, like, 50 videos on YouTube of people that rewrote that game. So oh, if I really? were to make a video, it would just get... It would just get buried by the algorithm, but but he like he he couldn't accept the fact that that it was even possible that that game could have improved at all, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, I think maybe he's 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 uh, doing what somebody who works for a company does, which is be diplomatic. He's about... he's being a corporate guy. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Right. Like I it, would. It, that's what I assumed. Right. I I would I, I mean, would think that that's what he would do, but he was taking a side. I I agree that there are things that... Druckmann's side. Yeah, I mean, right, he's just bread and butter. But I would trust... Her. I, I would probably trust that, too, because that's who wrote the game. I mean, who knows better than right. the person who it's... wrote the first one how the story should keep going. It's their mental, yep. you know, creation. It's their IP, essentially. I, I mean, right? Yeah. I, that That's always the thing. I had, I had this argument uh, a couple weeks ago when I was talking to somebody about bad writing. And I'm like, the phrase "bad writing" is is a is is a bad review. You mm. you you yes. have an issue. One hundred percent. You don't like something in the story because maybe you don't understand what they're trying to tell you, or maybe it doesn't communicate it in a way that <gasps> is easy for people to understand. And that sometimes could be called bad writing. But I think that if there are people out there who understand it, like I just beat Killer Seven when I was. 19 or whenever that first came out uh, yeah. back in 2005 uh boy did a lot of it go over my head and i was like you know what aside from the crazy visuals this story makes no fucking sense I play, <laughs> right I, play, I played it now and as i'm playing it i'm like they're oh. asking you to do a lot more detective work and now it makes sense why suda slid into doing you know silver case and detective type games yeah because I have that silver case file. There's that's part of what makes those things like more, you know, text texture or more like you have more substance is that there's a little bit of detective work that you kind of have to do as you're watching it. You don't right. just take the superficial like I'm the good guy dialogue and I'm the bad guy and we're going to have you put in a moral situation. It's like it, there's there's more nuance to that in in what I think Druckmann tried to do with the writing of that game. So when I think, to bring it back to what you said, Vec, yeah. when, yeah, when somebody like Troy Baker, who's worked heavily, like severely closely with Druckmann, he knows what Druckmann's intent was, and he probably has a pretty good idea on whether or not Neil felt like it landed or it didn't. And that... Yeah, I, you know, if he well, had just said that, right? Right. So that's where it comes back to the biggest thing where I say, when you say it's or when a person describes something as bad writing, I think it's a bad review. What are people still upset about? Like, what happens to Joel early on in that game? What happens to Joel? I think there's a lot of issues with, Because I, like, I honestly uh, love that. Abby? I love... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I think the, yeah. the, the, the Joel thing was, like, the shock that got everybody in. But what a cool shock! I mean, that's... Right? That's the Metal Gear 2 shock, well, and then And then that's also the same shock they gave you in the first game. Like, they... Uh, like fundamentally people people don't look at it fundamentally it's almost exactly the same game as the first game not beat for beat but they in there their... is a shocking character death very early on oh, in the first and game the, as and well they, yes. and they hit certain points and certain like um emotional highs like they try to and this is what people don't like they knew people weren't w weren't going to like abby but they they yeah. make the best effort to paint her out to be the nicest person and to give you a reason to care about her Oh man, she became play... my favorite. After, After I finished the game, she had become my favorite character. Right, but halfway through, when they oh, make you're like, you, yo, what is up with this chick? Yep. Yeah. Actually, more often than not, there, and this is what I loved about the game. This was, all, I think, this was all intentional. More often than not, they wanted to make you hate Ellie because that's what I heard everybody say. I don't like what she's doing. It's pissing me off. I, like everything she does is making oh, a yeah. mistake. Yada yada yada. And I'm like, yeah, you yeah. hated, yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're supposed to hate Ellie by she, the end of that game. She's the bad guy to these people, and they're trying to show you because video games can do that by putting your hands on their decision-making yeah. 
and your mind is now making their decisions. They're trying to make you feel for this character. And by mm-hmm. the end of the game, you at least understand her. You may not like Abby, totally. but you at least understand her. Totally. The only thing that I really, you know, uh, didn't connect with because it seemed a little unrealistic that her arms would be that big if they only have rationed one bean burrito a day yeah. to eat. Because I know firsthand, firsthand, I've had to eat so much food yeah. to get my arms even half the size of Abby's bicep. And her back and right. shoulders don't even get me started. You cannot develop that much muscle on one bean burrito a day. Correct. I mean, she better be hunting venison in the woods and keeping a stash outside of the city, like hoarding. You know, there's no other way she's building that uh, mm-hmm. good of a physique with uh, with one bean and cheese burrito. I, I mean, agree. There's no, there's absolutely no way. no way that could happen. No they better way. fix that in the show. <laughs> HBO, get on that shit. Um, anyway, back to so, she- Oddly enough. Uh, Neil yeah. Druckmann just recently, I think over the weekend uh, or in the past couple of days, gave an interview where he said, you know, Naughty Dog's next projects will take inspiration from games like Elden Ring mm. in terms of storytelling. Hmm. Well, that, isn't that interesting? And so yeah. he's like, he's kind of flipped the script because, like, as Naughty Dog, Naughty Dog being the the like the the cut recent scene masters, yeah, the the cutscene masters, you know, yeah. like specifically trying to the point where they they marketed uncharted 2 as a movie they were like oh my girlfriend really loves watching me play uncharted 2 and that's because she thinks it's a movie and not a game right and that was like in their marketing campaign which to me is disgusting (laughs) what do you mean by well so how what disgusts you about a game that could be marketed as a movie for somebody to watch who's not playing Right, well, that and that's that's a very good point. But it's like if if that's what you're interested in, if that's the type of storytelling, if you just want to do passive storytelling like that traditional books, movies, comics, go do that. Like if you're hmm. gonna be in the games industry and force all these people to work sixty hours a week oh, and good. you know and sacrifice their their livelihoods and you know not be able to see their families for months at a time to make this giant fucking game, yeah, you know like. Just make a movie if that's your your objective, you know. Well, Why enter the game space at all? You know, to to I actually the, have... the the lines are like being blurred in a way. Yeah, because I just saw today like fucking TMNT Shredder's Revenge is playable on Netflix. Really? Yeah. Whoa. I don't know how that Whoa. works, and I don't know if I saw something wrong. But as far as and I asked Trisha, I was like, you know about that? She's like, I heard about that. Huh. But I I don't know. Maybe we need to look that up. Because I mean, yes, yeah, streaming is available. Uh, to on, And if on, you're playing on a console, yeah. like, you already have a controller in your hand. Yeah. Netflix, TMNT, uh, Shredder's Revenge, like, specifically the game. Yeah, it's a mobile game. Is on mobile as a Netflix exclusive? What the Kill, fuck? Killer, D- Killer DLS in chat, I agree with you. I'm playing Persona 5 right now, and there's so much text in that game. Yes. Yeah. So, okay, here, here's a great example to answer your, your question, Beck, because, uh, ironically, I just watched the Uncharted movie. Uh, oh, God. I watched it last night. I hadn't seen nice. it. I didn't give a fuck about anything coming into it, <laughs> right? I, yeah. know, I know it's going to be a video game movie. I don't know what it's going to be. I don't know. I hadn't heard anything about it. All I knew is that people, just like with everything, wanted it to suck because it's right. easier to say it sucks first and then yeah. come around to it, then it is to go, well, you know what? I'm going to give it a shot and then come in with an open mind. I went in with sure. an open mind. Sure. Is it the video game? Fuck no. It's not the video game. You know why? It's not on a video game platform. Does the cut scene, does the, does the movie capture what the cut scenes like, represented? I think 100%. Here's what I realized watching that movie. It's way more engaging when my hands on the controller and I'm the one who has to make sure Nathan Drake doesn't die, then it is to watch Tom Holland play Nathan Drake in those dire situations. Fall out of the airplane with all the cars and the you, cargo. And... You know the movie's not going to stop if he dies. Or, or the movie's going to stop if he dies. Yeah, okay. Whereas, yeah. well, actually, no, no. You know the movie's not going to stop. Because you know he ain't going to die. Because he ain't going to die <sighs> like you are. So there's this certain um, immersion that brings you into caring in the fact that you're his, he's your avatar in this world. So all of the fun of the 
of the cutscenes, like the cool dialogue and everything like that, that's cool. But for two hours, I'm like, yep, it's uh, this is definitely like Uncharted. All of the fun in Uncharted is the gameplay. The gameplay when you're yeah. the one playing it and climbing around and you get comfortable with how that game controls, especially in 4 and in Lost Legacy. Like, man, with the stealth and the hiding and all the things that you can do, it makes it so engrossing. That, like, the little cutscenes where they have the same sort of, like, you know, B-movie dialogue. Sure. They're fun because they're the reward, like Killer DLS was saying about JRPGs. Like, when I was younger, the reward of completing a boss was a badass story cutscene. And that's, yeah, that's kind of how I looked at it. It was like, that was the reward. Yeah. And in Elden Ring, I think it's almost treated that way. Yes. Hey, you defeated a big story boss? Yeah. Here's, here's a tiny cutscene. Here's your reward. Yeah. And that was always, like, the coolest thing in a Final Fantasy game or, or, or whatever. And, and still, to this day, that's, like, playing any game. I love having that, like, movie that I can watch and enjoy. Like, okay, now here's some dialogue, but here's something that you can't get otherwise. Like, you know, when people would cut together Metal Gear 3, uh, you know, as a movie, like they put it on the fucking subsistence thing. Yeah. It's so boring. Upload the whole just movie? It's so, it was, no, it was officially printed. Like they made the game into, with Well, the I remember scenes. that. Yeah. I, I remember that. But but in the early days of YouTube, yeah. a lot of what I saw people doing was like, here's Metal Gear Solid 1 and 2 and yeah. 3 and 4, the movie. And it would be all the cutscenes with important gameplay right. clipped in where it needed to be. But there were these three or four hour long things. I remember even seeing people selling DVDs burned and sold on eBay of this yeah. kind of content. And, I mean, you can watch it and you can get a gist, but part of the storytelling is how you beat the boss. Hold on a sec. So we've opened up uh, this game and completed the first puzzle, oh. but this is like, gone into, like, oh, an no. opening... And uh, it shows frozen. you a cool cutscene, kind of. Yeah. And we're emerging from the ship, and we're making our way like up a snowy hill. But the s I made the screen so bright that you can't really see anything. So I was just clarifying. We're still playing. Oh, yeah. okay. I, I didn't know that. I thought you were stuck too. No, no. It's just <laughs> it's so blown out. There's a hole in the ground. Oh, jeez. I can't see that at all. I know. I'm turning now everything back down. From where it was, I'll probably have to change. So it. I, I actually wanted to talk about Signalis because I'm a huge fan of this game. I, I just played it recently. Okay, oh, yeah. cool. I'm um, glad. It's getting but I did, it. I did just want to, want to, want to clarify. You know, like my whole deal and and the reason why me and my friends founded Afterlife Games was to try and, you know, I mean to Brian's point, in terms of of storytelling and and being immersed and and having those cutscenes. And somebody in chat mentioned, you know, like games are there. It's it's we're making a transition into them being interactive art. Mm -hmm. I think I think there's a balance that can be struck. Yeah. Because like our my whole deal is just like trying to to help people realize that storytelling is so much more than just the passive methods that we're familiar with. You know, yes. story like there's storytelling everywhere in games. The gameplay itself tells a story. The there's storytelling in the environments that you explore. You know, like the the body language of the characters. These are all elements of storytelling that that I don't think games are fully capitalizing on yet. Mm -hmm. And and it's because of of games like Metal Gear Solid, Uncharted, and, and The Last of Us that that is preventing people from seeing the full potential of storytelling in video games. You think they're preventing? So that's it? that's just that's all I wanted to say. Because I do, I do, because like it, it through through yeah, so it much storytelling relying on cutscene and basically like that that's right. his issue with uh, but a see, game trying to be a movie have, have you seen the grounded documentary for for the last grounded us? yeah no. oh no no uh, i haven't oh so but i i do have issues with the last of us in uncharted in terms of gameplay but i won't get into that here yeah well i mean so do i in terms of certain gameplay elements uh, for the sake of uh, of a cinematic experience there's a lot of clunkiness especially in the Uncharted series. Right. In Last of Us and in Last of Us 2 especially, there's less of that clunkiness. It's a little bit more real world, which is fine. But, like, yeah, you kind of have to play Uncharted like a action movie, which makes no sense. Uh, <laughs> right. But you just have to put yourself in the mindset of an action star. That's what I mean. Assume the role, go full force, and you'll have so much fun with that game. But in terms of, uh, just real quick, going back to the... To what you're saying, in the Grounded documentary that they put out for the original Last of Us game, which I, uh, is still free, if I'm not mistaken, on Amazon Prime Video, um, they talk about 
how they actually embedded a lot of these things. Like, if you watch Ellie's body language in-game, throughout the game, like, and how she relates to you, what she speaks to you, and the things that she does, that's one of the things that really, really, I noticed the first time I played that game and was able to, like, pick up on. At the beginning of the game, she's super cold and doesn't really, right. like, whatever, Joel, whatever you say goes. Yeah, no, I got it. And then when they finally warm up to each other, like, her body language changes. She's talking to him. She's smiling more. She's brighter. Her right. hairstyle changes. Yeah. And that's in-game. And, I, yeah. and, and it's one and that's, of that's that's beautiful that yeah. you r- recognize that. Oh yeah, dude, that's that's one of my favorite things. And 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 again, like even in game design in general, like yellow indicates where you got to go. Like I try to sit back, and this is what I was saying about going to see a movie too. Like I try to sit back and go, okay, it's not what I would write because if I would write this, I got my pen, I got my computer, I'll write something, I'll do something, I can write my own music or whatever. This mm-hmm. person is, is 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 like Garrett was saying earlier. This person or this group is trying to tell me something, and I need to do the detective work to see if it's there. Because sometimes, for me, again, when I'm watching something, the detective work helps make it fun. Because you notice the things they do. Like, a character will do something and then look off. And you're like, what was that? Why, why did they look off? Or why did they kind of, you know, how? that's what makes movies so nuanced. And that's what I do think we're starting to see, Vec, in video games. And especially in, like... Yeah, high level, like, Kojima had that in Death Stranding, where there's a lot of, like, you know, you read their faces and you can see these, like, subtleties. I was like, why can't I fucking hear anything? The volume on the system was turned down. What? Oh, that affects the overall volume? Yep, apparently on the dock. Sorry to oh, no, no, in no. front of your... No, 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 I, I was wondering, too, because it sounded like... N- I was like, are you sure? I, I yeah, I've turned audio? the... I kept cranking the volume in other spots <laughs> yeah. on the software, and um, I'm going to turn those back down to normal now. Yeah. Well, maybe but, we can we can bridge the the topic back to this game because this game I think does storytelling, you know, pretty pretty well. I'm not gonna say it's perfect, uh, and this definitely isn't a perfect game, but but I did really enjoy it, and um, and I, I, just, I can't hear it though. I noticed <laughs> that. <laughs> well, it's finally coming out now, but I mean, yeah. So far, this for for what this is it has a vision that has been followed uh you know to an end and i'm curious where that end goes i've seen people talk about falling off of it towards the end but i'm curious i'm curious how long i'll stay with it but you really liked it you did what enjoy do you mean it? like you, you you don't think you you think you might not finish it well, it's on a portable system that I'm really like I said before at the top of the show. It's like, man, I'm really good at coming home. Yeah. When I'm done with my stuff, I turn my PS5 on, and that's like, I'm I'm sucked right into on. Elden Ring. So like, you know, uh, I just don't sit with a portable ever at home. You know, and I'm playing it on the PPS, but we're not gonna beat it on the PPS. So oh, okay. I don't I don't know I don't know honestly I, I don't finish most of my games. So I would say. Yeah. There's a very good chance I wouldn't finish this one. Yeah, um, I I had to, I had to finish it. I, I, you know, because it's it's just, to me it, it's it it was just like a love letter to the games that that I loved growing up in the '90s. You know. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, and, I just started, know, like, it, so it hasn't has really that... hooked me yet. And it, it's hard when I okay, play a game for the right. first time on stream too. I honestly don't like doing yeah. that. So I played for about a half hour this morning to just see like. Mm-hmm. What are even the controls like? Will I be able to play this on this? Does this have this whole huge intro tutorial section? It didn't, so I deemed it a good game for the show tonight. But um, this is really my mm. first, you know, time with it. You're seeing, basically, I have not gotten this far yet. Um, but I really do, I really do like it. I hope it's not too terribly long. That would benefit it. I finished it in ten hours. Oh, perfect! Ooh. Which which I thought I thought was too long, personally. Uh, okay, okay. Oh, because God, that sounds good I mean, it's me. it's more it's it's kind of a step down in terms of like, pro- like um, production value from like Resident Evil One or Two, sure, or even Silent Hill. It's, since it's more, it just has more of an indie feel. I I feel like the the length could have been toned down because there's a lot of tedium later on, and you know like when you have to there's a six inventory slot limit and so you're constantly having to go back to to save safe rooms uh that's to what get i've heard stuff out of your inventory right yes. yeah so 
you know, there's that, but you know, I, I just I love the way it looks and feels. It's got the the Resident Evil influence, Silent Hill, Metal Gear. Yeah. It just like it's a real these guys really understand the genre, which I felt uh Callisto Protocol they those guys they don't know what silent I mean what a survival horror is, but these guys absolutely do. Yeah. Yeah. I'm uh I've got to go to reception first apparently. Yeah, it, it, that's interesting cuz I I didn't think that uh I didn't feel like Callisto Protocol was uh survival horror. And I what know you love like? that game and so I'm, I I don't like mean to knock adventure. that game at all like Yeah. It, it's like a it's like an action horror rhythm game. It's weird. like Ryan called it a rhythm game once and I'm like, yeah, actually that's exactly how I would describe it and that's why I love it so much. There's a certain like each each enemy you take is a track, and then there's a certain way that – there's one way that you can beat all of them, and, and it's just dodge, dodge, hit, dodge. Or you can get creative and use a, you know, a B flat or an A minor or, you know, do the – you know what I mean? Like if you're writing music, like you can get creative with all of the different notes that you have to bring in to write a song. And so it gives you this really fun sort of gameplay me- method where you're chucking and diving like a uh, – uh, chucking and dodging like a boxer would – and then you're also using your, you know, your one weapon to do this, to set up another guy to grab them and do that, and to grab this other thing, or like, you know, shoot this one thing. I really enjoyed the, um, the weird like sandbox it almost gave you. Dude, here's here's like meta storytelling in the game. A poster that says, "Yeah, only can carry six items. Remember, don't be greedy. <laughs> carry six items. The rule of six. Don't be uh, personal property is a privilege. Keep your pockets empty and your bag light. Like I like that. That how way. cool is that? Yeah. Right? <laughs> that is a really good example of that. Yeah. Oh wow. I, I mean, they could have if, if the graphical fidelity was was better and like the pixel count was higher, you could do that without having to go into a separate menu. Yeah. Forcing the player to read. You know, like just taking people out of the gameplay experience is something that that. Me is, and my team try to avoid as yeah. much as possible. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, and, and I mean, I, again, that's that's another thing that um, that like these is a style choice though, like because these old games had a document yeah. and it had the thing, right? And so, right. you kind of see it is that, very Silent Hill, where like you have to read these memos and you yeah. have to remember, like this said something about a passcode for a wall safe being reset to the default yep. one. Yep. It's it's more which lets me know, like, okay. There's gonna be, you know, a yeah, a, a, another memo I read with that wall safe code in it. Yep. Or or it's yeah. I don't being I don't want to say too much because but, like this game's like it's really something that I think people should experience and you know it's it's like the the less you say the better you know. Okay. Cool. cool. Yeah. I'll, I'll honestly now that I've seen the gameplay of it. Uh, this is probably a game that I would love for for that reason because I love to pour over all these documents and see what all the nooks and crannies have hidden in them. And oh, like, I did get here before because I saved. You know, yeah. I mean, like, this is as far as I've. And been. I love that the great Silent Hill reference there. Yeah. Um, where goes to red? But I oh, mean, man, yeah. yeah, you're in for some Silent Hill references. Oh yeah, I, I mean, again, it's it's to me, it's it's let's see what the game is trying to tell me, and this is very clearly trying to capture a certain type of gameplay style, and like, yeah, they probably could have done a higher pixel count somewhere or done something else, but nowadays people are less limited by whether or not a system can handle it, and more, I think, like being creative about their choices. You know right. what I mean? Whereas, like, back in the day, the reason you had to go to a separate menu to read a fucking document is it's calling up a part of the cartridge that isn't already loaded or the file or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, Good game, point. Games were different. Like, the so you re- think this going to inspect a poster, going into first-person mode, like, that's an aesthetic choice that they chose? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas back in the day, they would have had to do mirror. that so that you could look at right. something different. It almost is an homage to the old game, but yep. it's it's also just setting the tone of, like, Here's it is going to take you out of it, but this is the way right? we're choosing to do you it. Want, you want a great example of this? Uh, it just popped in my head. Metroid Other M. Yeah. Great game. Wonderful game. Absolutely fun. So much fun. If you just play the game, you'll fucking love that game. Yeah, I really had fun with that. Right? And what do people hate about it? She fucking talks too much. Why is this all this story with this guy and that thing? What is the Space Federation and all this stuff? And I'm like... 
See what happens when you add <laughs> story where in a game where the story is told environmentally, it throws people off because they're not expecting to be told what to think. Yo, I'm stuck. Oh, here we go. <laughs> Could and, not get out. And they can't get past it because they're like, I just want to play. Why do I keep having to hear what Samus says internally? What if I wanted to hear what Samus says internally? What if I'm interested for the first time ever? They're giving her something to say. So, I don't know. Let's check it out. And it's a pretty cool origin story for Samus if if you want to consider it, but nobody does. Oh, well, is that game technically like the first? In it's kind of like yeah, like where she started with Space Federation. It's like an earlier story in the in the timeline. It's also, I gotta it's admit a, that's a, that's another one. Like if it's out on Switch, I really never finish it. Like I don't think I've finished a Switch game in a couple years. Wasn't that Sadly. on the Wii? That was on the Wii. It's one of my oh, favorite. Oh, I Wii thought you were games. talking about. I thought you were talking about the new one. I'm sorry. No, no, uh, Metroid Dread. That one. I, that one returned. I mean, that one did a good mix. Like they got Mercury Steam, and Mercury Steam oh, kind of like knows how to do the platform without it being too much. But they definitely, again, they dialed it back. There isn't as big of a narrative. It's more like get into a zone and you're told what to do again, like it was back in the day. It's just more animated now. Look at this. Can yeah. More. We're looking for Elster. <laughs> you are Elster. I am Elster. Have you seen her? Oh, oh, I am Elster. And this girl's name is Star, <laughs> and we're looking for, I don't know, this anime captain here. Yeah. That's your uh, that's your gestalt, I guess. That's my gestalt. Okay, yeah. She wasn't in her cryotube. She oh, might be man. one this of the workers. Game, man, I can't wait for you to see the ending. What the so fuck? good. Uh, honestly, this the, the last He's game. doing I... some Junji Ito shit right now. Right? The last game that, that caught my attention like this that had, uh, uh, like, I felt like, got the aesthetic of what i'm into in games was yeah. that tormented souls game or yeah. tortured souls whatever the fuck it's called i get it confused with the goddamn uh clive barker toy um <laughs> it was, so is tormented souls is the game <laughs> okay tormented souls that game was phenomenal that was such a fun fucking game you brought in the demo after yeah. going to pax east last year i bought it on the stream and then i played it at home in like a week it was yeah. so fun yeah was, a lot of yeah, people like out. that is yeah that was that was really. I think good. I might I might have that. It's very like uh you know it's a it's a Resident Evil clone. Yeah, is what I'd say. Ooh, what's oh, that? I have played that. I uh, I I do remember having memories of that game. Yes, it's... with very like intuitive puzzles, like the puzzles like logically made sense in real world, like they yeah. were well thought out puzzles. Like I remember the one that I wouldn't have solved unless you told me about like a valve or a like oh you need a certain load for this. To, to start anyway, so you need to amp it up to, like, 10-plus on, on this scale. Otherwise, you're not going to have enough load to get it. And I'm like, what? Oh, uh, like, yeah, voltage drop. You have to account for the starting load and the voltage yeah, drop. Yeah, it was something like that on, like, some generator the system. cold cranking amps or, uh, or what? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was, it, it was so funny. But my favorite was still there's a puzzle with a floppy disk, and, it, and I looked it up later. It is a make-or-break puzzle for people. I've said this before on this story, uh, on this show, but I'll say it a million times because please go check out this game. It's actually really, really fun. The story has got that fun, campy jank of old Silent Hill and Resident Evil games, but the gameplay really does a great job of like getting you through solving all these puzzles while having a fun um, combat system. Mm. Floppy disk, they hand it to you. First thing I do when I examine it is see if I can pull back the slide for the magnetic cover, the yeah. magnetic oh, tape yeah. cover. Underneath, there is a very important code that you need for something else. Uh, when I looked online, so many people had looked it up who didn't know about that because they'd never held a floppy disk. Right. <laughs> they just didn't know that they opened that way. Right? Because Newton, like, I mean, yeah, we've been around long enough to have our papers saved on a floppy disk and maybe turn them in for, you know, in high school. Like, oh, yeah, turn turn your paper oh, in dude. on a floppy disk just in case so that there isn't any, like... That was the first way I played Pokemon Red and Blue. It yeah. was on a 3x5 yeah. floppy emulator <laughs> on a PC. Playing. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I mean, I played a lot of games that way. But the, the fact that, you know, mille or what we're millennials, so whatever's after us, Gen Z or whatever, I don't fucking know. But Zoomers don't know about that fucking thing, so they didn't know where to find this code. And even being told yeah, some dude. cryptic clue... They're like, yeah, They're I would like, never think to right. slide the thing. Yeah, I remember when I when I met somebody for the first time who had never seen a floppy disk, and I was like, just, you know, I, I've lived long enough, I think. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I love that it's still... So speaking of a Tormented Soul, 
Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, does that game allow you to play with uh, tank controls? Old school? I think it is in tank controls. Yeah, I believe it. that's the way it controls. Yeah. Um, it might have, like, the because three... Because this game... Yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt. No, no. no. Go ahead, go ahead. Time difference is killing me. The, this game has an, a toggle to switch to tank controls, and I tried it, but the way the environments are designed, it doesn't really work because you'll constantly get stuck yeah. on the environment. So yeah, because you, you, you kind of have to play. Oh, that's interesting. When you say tank controls, you mean with the D-pad instead of the analog? Well, I could do no, that I mean too. like like using left and right to turn and then up to go forward. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it might have that. I can't remember. But well, he's saying it does. Default. He's saying it does. No, no, the the. Well, this game. No, Souls. he's talking about Tormented Souls. Oh, right, right, right. I can't remember off the top of my head. I wouldn't play that way just because uh, it's been too long since those have been the controls. That to switch back into that mode is always one of the hardest things to do in a game. So if I don't I, have to, I like tank I controls. I'm weird. Uh, you know yeah, what? I, I do, do too. I do if it's a muscle memory thing. Throw me into Resident Evil Two, and I will, and I will do it. But if it's like a new game where they have like more of a modern setup for the controls. I'll I'll tend to that just because it's it works better and I even did it with Silent Hill, but um, but yeah because I think you could change it. It was like 3D controls on or off in in Silent Hill for a while. Hmm. Right. Yeah. Um. But yeah. What? I, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm glad that you enjoyed this game. I'm glad to hear uh that it's honestly a shorter play, you know, <laughs> compared to what I am putting in. So maybe I'll take a little break on. Um, honestly, I have taken about a three-day break on Elden Ring to where, you know, over the break, Christmas and New Year's, I played every fucking night. I mean, every night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and now I've taken about three days off. Just need a little, you know, a little palate cleansing. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Maybe, uh, maybe I, I, I will it. finish Signalis before I go back. Damn. I like a little short I think, game. I think you'd like it a lot. I, I am so far. I'm, I'm really digging it. I gotta inspect the items I have. I know there's a key card. Do I put it in here? That's Hell where I yeah. came from now. Well, well thanks shit, for yeah. coming on, man. I uh, always like talking to you, Victor. Vector, Vector. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Victor, Vector. What's your Vector, Victor? What's your Vector, <laughs> Vector? Uh, thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, Ten dude. Four, good buddy. Take care. Roger Take Dodger. Care. Over and out. Later. Peace. Always a good time with Dead Dog. So, uh, we have come out of oh the surface oh it says i can't go there but i know there's a room in the back here we have a key card let's see if we can use it on this yellow door and i think it's back here there's a run button or you know this is normal walk speed mm -hmm. and you can hold down b and you kind of you have a little bit of a more of a gate in your step yeah see i like that the steam oh, deck here. does have the uh the dock Honestly, because I like you, I would not be playing too portable. much of this portable. I did a little bit when Jasmine was playing um, like some Switch on TV, and you know it's fun to have her play something. And then it's like, oh yeah, I have the Steam Deck, and I can hop into something there. But, yeah. But honestly, I'm more just like, nah, let's just plug it in and and have it take over the the, the TV. Like I'm well, that's the thing. Sitting like, down to play this now. Yeah. When I sit down and play video games, like I sit in the living room with my big screen. Yeah. You know, surround sound. Yeah, you know, like I, I, I set that up for a fucking reason. Like I, I'd like the even if it's a, even if it's a sixteen or thirty-two bit simulated graphics, I would still want it on the large screen. Um, Magnetic key card for the observation room. Wait, where's the observation? Room? Does that say you're in the aula? The AVLA. AVLA. Uh, there's a classroom four B, which has a wall safe. I haven't found the code yet. Save room here in the staff room, corridor, microfilm viewer in the library. <laughs> and then that's it. What what was it? Surface access. No, we don't want that. Or the bathroom. What does she say? I'll be out of here as soon as the repair patch stops my Put bleeding. Put a bullet between her eyes. You should get out of here too. I don't know when that woman is, but she's probably dead by now. No, that's my gestalt. Sprechen Sie Gestalt Officer? Oh, that's cool. It just shows you. Yeah, you're down there. Yeah. You went off screen. I like that. Yeah. I'm going to crank that back up a little. I turned it down when Vec was on, but finally that's we figured so it out. Funny. I was like, why is it so quiet? I that's boosted so the gain funny. on the computer. I didn't know that it would uh, affect 
the buttons on the external on, yeah, device yeah. controls it. Oops. I'll have to take a look at that when I get home. So uh, Jeff Beck is a guy who used to write music in the seventies. Okay. There's an artist. Sorry, somebody asked who Jeff Beck is. I, I the only reason I know him is when I go um, uh, crate surfing, I see like a thousand Jeff Beck records in the in in the thrift store. So I don't know anything about them other than I think they're a musician and they died today. What? Oh, they died today. Yeah, that's oh. that's why. Because uh, Dylan was saying, anyone know who Jeff Beck is? He passed away. Yeah, he's a musician. Well, I I don't know about that news, but I did see the news that um. Well, we we talked about it last week that apparently Vince McMahon came back, <laughs> just like oh, yeah. Succession. Yeah. Uh, no one <laughs> saw that coming. I mean, maybe people did. Hopefully, Triple H did. No, um, <laughs> I hope so. But now, apparently, he has sold the company to Saudi Arabian investors. I'm well, so we, there is no happy. official word yet on whether or not it's. Been I'm sold. seeing it's sold, baby. It's <laughs> but as it's good as done. I'm getting horny now. And to so. Think about it. There's, I think it's definitely been sold, but I don't know if it's to a Saudi private investment group. Okay. That's the one thing. I think that it's been sold, and I think they've been trying to sell it or working out a deal to sell it for, like, two years. Really? Yeah, that's what people were saying, like, a year and a half ago. Like, the they were cutting a bunch of people, cutting a bunch of staff. That's why Regal got fired. A bunch of wrestlers got dropped. Like... They're trying to trim. Well, Regal just left AEW to go back to WWE. That, that was part of it. Um, but, like, so And now far, they're still in trouble, so they need outside investment? Y- y- well, I think basically what it is is I think they've been trying to sell it for a while because they they don't... I think they wanted to bring it back oh, into private door. ownership instead of it being a publicly, a publicly traded, traded company. Yeah, they really? wanted it to be a private company again. Um, so who knows what, what, because again, all of this is rumors, nothing, sure, I believe out yet. nothing until, uh, WWE at WWE on Twitter says WWE has been sold to Comcast or whoever until then. I don't believe shit. It's all rumor mill. Yeah. Wait, where's that door? Oh, it's back here. There's one door I haven't checked that I keep missing. Uh, this one. The the only real thing, yes, somebody said, uh, D- Killer, uh, Killer DLS in the chat says that that's true. The only real oh, thing shit. we know, Stephanie McMahon is no longer co CEO with Nick Khan. Really? Vin- yep. Vince is back. He's the he is the chairman of the board, you know. But he is. That's uh, so funny, dude. He is. Uh, ooh, oh, hey, that's a nine millimeter Beretta, right? That's like your Samurai Edge. Is that a Beretta? That's totally a that Beretta. It looks like a 1911. No way, dude. No, you're right. Pick it up. Pistol. Picked up pistol. What's this? Aperture card. I bet there's a card reader I could slide this into. Oh, hell yeah. In the library. Here's a how to use the gun. Type 75 pistol. It's a short recoil operated lock breech semi automatic pistol chambered in the 10 by 20 millimeter. Oh. What is that? Bigger than a 9 millimeter? Yeah. The reliable, versatile handgun is the standard issue sidearm for the Aeon Protector Control Staff. Controller Staff. Replica users, remember to first equip the Type 75 pistol in the inventory screen to designate the pistol as your primary weapon for the targeting module. To deploy the weapon, hold LT to disengage the safety. And enter targeting mode. While in targeting mode, right trigger and A, both fire the weapon. RB will initiate a reload. Okay. Oh, I didn't finish reading it. Sorry. Remember, do not waste ammo. It is a resource of the nation. When a target is down, try to finish it off by kicking or hitting it with a baton to preserve animation. This a- ammunition, I should say. Oh. This is crazy how much it's like Silent Hill. Yeah. CZ-75 Compact. It really, Yeah. It just that- looks... Brian, it actually looks like a snub nose. Beretta M92F. Yeah. Has a similar little, like, grip and everything. That's it. Yeah. I mean, it looks longer in its snout on the game compared to this little guy. Yeah. Not you. You're not a little I'm guy. I'm not a little guy. You're I'm a big little. dog. Shut the fuck I'm littler up. than Eric. I'm a big deal. You're a big dog. You know what? No. Eric's a, Eric's a little. I'm a big boy. I'm just a little guy. I'm a big boy. I'm a big boy. Eric tweets some of the funniest shit, uh... Fuck Eric. I think, uh... 
<laughs> some about shit like he's gonna get into, and I'm just like, what the fuck is this nonsense? Yeah, uh, yeah, he does. He has some good stuff. I like his go live tweets. I don't even know what I'm doing. This is my first stream. <laughs> <laughs> when Trish went back to streaming Lady T stuff yeah. yesterday, I don't know why I just I I reply or I I when we went live I tweeted out she's back. Yeah, I saw that. Or no, she came back. She came back. Like as if she left. Like in my mind, it was like she came back. God, like well, I'm tweeting like like she left me, but she came back. Oh, I see. I don't know why I thought that was so fucking funny in my I own head. It was funny. I don't think it came off that way at all. Nope. She came back. Nope. I just read I mean, it. She as... came back to streaming, but yeah. I, I, in my <laughs> mind, it sounded like it sounded like this desperate thing. Like, guys, we're live right now. She came back. Ah, uh, I see. <laughs> yeah, I did not read like that. I can my... see an empty classroom on the other uh, side of the window. Shoot it. The class seems like it's tinted. Or a one-way mirror. Oh, so maybe we got to get to the other side. I like the fan with the fucking... The string yeah. hanging off of it. And the oscillating. And not, you know, there is a lot of good, like, environmental storytelling in games nowadays. And I think, and I think like, to Vex point, I think people need to pay attention to games more. As silly as that sounds, like... Yeah, I don't know what the fucking controls are. I can't remember shit. Here we go. Like, you can do them passively, but, like... Yeah, when you're playing a game like this, and you can really get into some of the cool little, like, nuances of the game, like, yeah, combine shit, look at shit. Like, you'll find little, you know, who knows, like, is that a little chip thing that you can take yeah. out? I don't know, it's flashing for some reason. Why is it flashing? Like, again, yeah. be a de- be a detective. In a video game, if it's, if it's there, it's there for a reason. Or it should be. Otherwise, yeah, that, that, I guess that's my biggest complaint with a game like Horizon Zero Dawn. Like, none of the dialogue needs to be there. Half of the dialogue is just like, yo, oh, do, dude, you, do yeah, you feel like talk, reading a book? They talk too much to you in that game. Like, nah, brah, I don't want to I don't want to read a book. What about the Karja? I don't care. What about yeah, the, but the Nora? Shadow I Karja. Care. I don't care. Oh, look, the, oh, a daemon. Oh, what and the fuck? What the, what the fuck? fuck? Now that you got a gun, it's whoa, up. Whoa, 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 whoa. How'd she get up? Damn, dog. Oh, hell nah. Is that my gestalt? <laughs> it might be. Oh, hello. Look like fucking Ray. Oh, she killed her. Or something. You don't belong here either, do you? I'm Isa. Isa Ito. You should be careful. There's something wrong with this place. I don't know what happened, but it's probably dangerous to go any further. It's okay. I understand. I have something I need you to do. Take care. I need to do. Sorry. I hope you find who you're looking for. I didn't even get to ask you, and you're just... Walking around with a knife? I guess she doesn't want to mess with the robot with a gun. Right? <laughs> no. I wouldn't. She brought a knife to a gunfight. Oh, you got a laser sight? Whoa! Whoa! I like that. I like the stepping over your leg animation that she kind of does. The oh, turn. yeah. In Resident Evil, Jill or Chris would... Sh- they would just shuffle that first foot and pivot on the back one. <laughs> yeah. It looked so weird. This is nice. Because it was easier to animate. It was, yeah. Why waste the frames, right? Like, again, like, th- that's part of the thing I like about video games is that people, uh, you know, they don't realize how much goes into the back end of, of how games are made, and especially new games. Uh-huh. Oh, here, it's going to give me the keypad for the enter the code using the keypad. Confirm in the lower right corner. Rotate the dial on the left. To clear any previously entered digits, hit E in the lower left. First time, factory default code because it's been reset. While door is open, desired new code on the keypad. Press confirm 10 seconds. But we know it's 204 512. Okay, let's get our asses there. 204 512, baby. Oh, wait, this fucking thing. Fuck you. Ah! I'll shoot you later. 204 512. How's my health, though? Uh, we're yellow. We're yellow, and I haven't found how to heal. Uh, or any healing items. I mean, I'm a fucking robot, right? How do you... What do you take? Drink oil? Two. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Beaming Butt says this four, game reminds him of Parasite Eve. Five. Totally. Oh, my God. Totally. 512. Wait, E is a race. No, enter. Green light means go. Turn the fucking dial. Boom, baby. 
No, skip to the... T That's right. Let's see. Let's see. Have a peek inside. Got the Klazenzimer card. <laughs> Will you take up the classroom key? I got that classroom key. Let me check it out. What's it look like? Ah, inspecting. Opens classroom 4C, doorway in the Alua on level one. What's my name? Azalea or? Azalea Banks. Assessor, Esther. Oh wait, I'm gonna shoot this motherfucker when I Edsel? come in here. How do I? I don't know. Estrella? Boom, boom. Estrella. That means street. Como, como se dice Estrella? Estrella. Elster. E-L-S-T-E-R. Elster. Oh shit, the targeting module. Oh. Whoa, she's down. Kick them. Kick them when they're the up. Oh. Kick them when they're down. Kick them like when that. they're up. Kick them all around. See, this is, honestly, to me, this looks like the perfect Steam Deck game. Because I will probably play this on a TV 99% of the time. Yeah. But but if you want to, like, hey, I, I already <laughs> kind of started solving this puzzle. I just want to take it with me on, yeah. on the go. On the plane, or I want to take a shit. Dude, on a plane, this would be good. Yeah, like this is this is the kind of thing that I would play kind of on the couch. Like the Steam Deck's like a book, you know, like you play it on the couch for a little bit. Like I'm not going to play no epic game entirely on my Steam Deck, but I'll play Batman uh, Blackgate Origins because it's a great book. You know what I mean? Like little indie games, concise little like things like this uh, that I would never play otherwise. That's, that's kind of what I've been buying on this. I mean, yeah. aside from like. You know, Quake and Quake clones. Yes, yeah. I'm not gonna buy Witcher three on here. I'm not gonna play. I thought I would play. Honestly, Witcher would be the one game that I, if I could cross. Mason save. just gave me, dude. Seriously, you fucking are saying that? It's so funny because, like, look at this. Mason just gave me the Witcher. Oh, the first one. Yeah. yeah he's like, yeah. Hey, wow. Everyone in my library has this, and I have an extra copy. Like, I'm giving you this. But he also told me about like this other indie game, Lone Survivor, that we could play later on oh, here. Oh, nice. Um, which is very Silent Hillish as well. Um, oh yeah, no, but this is honestly selling me on this game for. God damn it, that's not the map for uh for uh, Stream Deck, I or Steam Deck. The only other thing is I just man I love playing games on my PS5 and that controller is so. Well, I mean, good. you can use I, you it. You can dog. use it, but then I like getting trophies. Yeah, there. Even you though go. I don't care about platinum. Fuck there the platinum. You, there you go. Uh, let's see here. I have the key to get into that yellow door, so as soon as I can get out of this room, I might be almost out of ammo. It said there was a reload button. Wait. Uh, didn't work. I don't want to accidentally shoot again. But, oh, it didn't work because I have no more ammo. Duh. But maybe there'll be some in here. Oh, yeah. What was this? Ooh, what's that? Oh, repair patch. I didn't see that. That doll that was uh, here must have dropped it. And this wasn't here before either. Hello? There we go. 10 millimeter ammo. That's so weird. <laughs> 10 millimeter. Picked up the 10 mil. Let's see if I reload now. Yes! And we get a unique animation for it too. Okay, on to the classroom. Should I? Oh, fuck. Another hole. A lot of Silent Hill-esque holes in the ground you have to crawl into. <laughs> Drop down, crawl into this hole. Sure. Now it's like Diablo. Sure, why not? Yeah, right. Uh, Let me just look at the inventory. If I should put the repair patch on, I'm in yellow. Sealed single-use patch containing coagulation to damage areas. Stores a small amount of health over time. Fuck yeah, let's use it. Let's use it and let's drop down. I really do like the style of this game. There were a lot of games uh, that I loved on. Um, see, I've said this before. The Game Boy Advance was such a great system because it took that this kind of style. Oh yeah. And made it. What the like fuck? make made it work better than like it could have ever worked even on the N sixty four. Um, like. Golden yes. Sun is one of my favorite games on the Game Boy Advanced, which is that, you know, that RPG by Camelot. 
the same people who do Mario Tennis and um, Mario Aces. Uh, sorry, Mario uh, Golf. Um, but, like, man, it, it, like, it's so cool to see a game with this kind of style. Because I still kind of like these things. Like, I like the top-down Zeldas. I like... I still like this kind of game where the exploring is like a tableau and you go from one tablet to another to another to another and you see these Yeah, set this pieces. is definitely interesting. Like, I don't... West Wing key required. Um, I don't fault this indie game for its retroness at all. I think it's going for that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The elevator's out of order. Not this one. Damn, should I already be taking the elevator, though? Ah. Uh, oh, what the fuck? It freaks me out when it goes into first-person mode. <laughs> Let's see. Elevator controls locked, so it doesn't even matter. And what the fuck? The, the Krankenfugel. You want to go to Krankenfugel A or Krankenfugel oh, I, oh, B? I, guess so. I do. You want, yeah, I know oh, where I you want to go. Oh, after work, I'm going to Krankenfugel. You want to go to Protect the Quartier. Protect my back quartier. Yeah, I always protect your Wharton back quartier. Wharton Spring. Wait, would you have to put a disc in? I'm her? coming out the rear, bruh. I need a protector identification card to unlock the elevator control panel. Okay, well, that only went that far. Wait, what's this? Ooh, picked up the service hatch key. Well, let's fucking crawl up a service hatch, baby. See what else we got in here to see. Uh, just the map. Arbiter, Krankenfugel, uh, Personal, Protectorian, and uh, Frongus Commando. <laughs> and the Mizengong. The Flounch? Lil Orbital. Yo. Are these real German words? Forst. Okay, back out of here. Or did we miss the control hatch? Maybe the control hatch was up on the ceiling. Let me look up. Ooh, oh, no. good idea though. Just the light. Did uh, are you are you waiting to get Crisis Core Reunion or are you? No, it's sealed. Oh, you bought it. Oh, did you get it for Christmas? Yeah, I got oh. that and um, the Callisto Protocol both sealed. You know, because I've just been sucked into <laughs> Elden Ring. Yeah. And now you know, you're looking at looking at this, I I've had this purchased for months. Um, and God of War is still sealed. Oh, why did I buy that at full price? Yep. So I thought I was gonna play it. I thought I was gonna have time before Elden Ring, honestly. Whoa. Uh yeah, I've I've gotten I've gotten better at that over the last couple of years of like like I get really excited about a game and, yeah. I, and then I'll like I'll buy it day one, but I'm still playing like seven other games and I'm like, why the fuck did I buy this? <laughs> I know, you were excited. I know. So like yeah, like the same thing. Sometimes I... though a game it is so limited in physical yes. print that you need to get it right away. Yes. If you're if you're a collector and you and you are, then yeah. Like it's it's important to get certain things because they may never be available um after that. But yeah, like God of War, I never bought God of War one. The okay. remaster the, when I played it, Frank let me borrow his. He had moved in uh, at that point, so I could yeah. just play whatever game he wanted. Now it's free on PS Plus, so there's sixty dollars I saved. Yeah, right. Like totally. And and, and so, <clears throat> and so like, I think that's part of you know uh, just being patient and playing the games you're most excited for has been really helpful for me, because like I don't feel inundated anymore in a game. Now I'm like, I'm almost like fuck. Okay, I finished this game. Oh, what's a good little like buffer game before I hop into my next like project? Like I beat Callisto Protocol, and I was like, man, I want to play something, but I don't want to get into like a huge story. Yeah, oh, totally. You know what? I bought the fucking deluxe edition of Lost Judgment, which came with uh, DLC. I was just gonna say, it's like, yo, I need to go back to like, yeah, Yakuza Seven, right? And... So that's you what got I do. Some, you got some DLC to go back to in that? Yeah, yeah. They're excited for that? They released some DLC after the game came out and after I had beaten it, but I had just beaten the game when it had, when it had come out. And I'm like, right now, I've, I've spent the last 20 hours finishing Lost Judgment. It's a phenomenal game, but if I try to play this, I'm going to get burnt out. Put it on the shelf for a year, and now I picked it up. And, yeah, it's like, oh, man, I'm, now I'm hungry, but I don't have to get involved in a giant RGG RPG you know what I mean? Like, their worlds sure. take 40 hours to beat. This one will probably take me maybe 15, you know, like, if if that. Like, I feel sure. like I'm, I'm closing 
I'm getting to the close of it. But uh, already. Oh yeah, yeah. It's like, I, I, and I think it's meant to be shorter. So it's nice because yeah, it's a little DLC package, which is probably only 15 or 20 hours, and that's, that's cool. exactly what I want. And that's how. That's what I liked about Callisto Protocol. That's that was the game I was most anticipating this year. That's kind of why I didn't buy God of War Ragnarok, because if I bought God of War Ragnarok, I would have played it for three weeks, four weeks. Callisto Protocol would have come really? out, yeah, and, and would then put I would have put it down, and I would have, and I probably wouldn't have come back to it. But then again, then the thing is, well, shit. If I would have come back to it, why not come back to it when it's forty dollars instead of seventy? Or 60. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And I did that with Lost Judgment, too. I actually bought it for the full price for the deluxe edition. Ooh. We've opened this hatch. I like it. With the uh, service hatch key. Looks like we could get into some trouble here for sure. Oh, my God. What the fuck? Funky Town. Funkatron? I think I have a drum beat on here called Funkatron. Won't you take me to Yeah, hold on. Let me hit the Funkatron. Won't you take me to Funky Drum? Oh, this went to sleep. Ah, shit. I didn't know my, my new Roland is a battery-operated drum machine, but it, it fell asleep on me. <laughs> That's not good. That's the real Funky Drum. Enough funky town. Um, What's I don't, the scariest I don't know movie you've ever seen? This. Oh wow! Someone in the chat asked that. Yeah, mine was Climax by Gaspar No. I'm sure there was really? one that was scarier, um, but I didn't like, see that. I'm trying to think like what's a movie. I love where... Gaspar No's stuff too. His shit is. Yeah, it's fucking. It, it's you scary. feel it, man. I kind of I almost like want to watch it again. Watching it made me so fucking anxious. The fuck am I rebuilding the key? Yeah, it looks like. Oh whoa! It might look be. at look at the lock. Oh, do you do it to the line on so the? So this pins? one has to be down lower. I guess I don't know. That's weird, right? Or the line in the middle of the pins, or to there and where? Okay. I don't know. I don't know either. Funky ton. Mm, okay, the bottom one has to be down more. Wait, I can't do it down more, though. Oh, the top two have to be up more. Or the middle two have to be up more. Boom. Boom. That's not the... Uh, okay, so scariest movie for me, when I was younger, man, the the first movie that really, like, made me fucking scared to, like, walk around after I watched it at night was uh, The Exorcist. I remember renting The Exorcist. Yeah. Watching it alone in my bedroom at night. It must have been in high school or right after. No, it must have been in high school. And then I had to go outside. Uh, and I was walking around outside and going like, oh, my God. Like, what if, I be what if I'm possessed? What if I become po How How do you avoid possession? <laughs> oh, my God. What is – what's – what strange demon is hiding in the shadows waiting to take my mortal soul? Am I going to get uh, – Am I, am I gonna jam a crucifix up my own, uh, up my own ass? I mean, what could happen to me? What kind of devil would do that? Am I gonna suck cocks in hell? Go to your room. <laughs> I'm gonna suck cocks on earth. Quiet. Um, you probably have to match the pins to oh to the top to the top thing. Yeah, I'm thinking now the bo the the first three have to go down. Down. One, two. Oops. The door to the lock turns recess, which normally requires a key to be operated. We've got a. We've got the locksmith's tool. The locksmith was called, and he left his tool here. That didn't do it. Because you're making the key, right? Well, this is the locksmith's universal key tool. Right, right. okay. So we aspargus. Argus. An ultrasound sensor mounted on the side of the lock is connected to the lock picking device. Oh, that's the camera that's looking into the lock, and this is the, the lock generator. So if I could just see... All the tumblers are down there. 
but it's like this one I don't know I don't know exactly is that it Hmm. Hmm. The tumblers. Uh, that's huh. what somebody says. Mm. I don't know what that uh. means. The tumblers. Uh. That's what these. Your key goes in to the yeah. four tumblers, and it moves them to align the lock to open. So that's why I'm like looking at like those. Oh, so those four you, lines. Like, wouldn't the key yo, open there, okay. or is it the bottom? So you're. It's it's being able to have the pins One, two, connect three. all the way into the bottom, One, right? Two, three. I think it's the dark gray, not the light white. Oh, so let me maybe, try this now. Maybe you're right. Yeah. The no, thing that didn't on do the anything. bottom, right? The bottom row is where you're trying to fill it up. I, yes, I think now. I think your last one is okay. One, two. Let me see. I, yeah, I think the other ones need more room, or they need to be down more. The first and the last one, maybe. I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. It's hard to say. <clears throat> I assume the dark cylinders need to go below that bottom line. I thought that, and I already did it that way. But now uh, everything's up as high as it goes. Okay. So that's obviously not right. So it's not the dark cylinders that have to be able to turn. It's the white cylinders. Now I'm just looking at the last one. That's not exactly centered. That is. Now that's centered, right? Or one more down. Maybe that looked centered. Okay. Let me focus on the second one now. You saw Barbarian, right? Yeah, but twice. Yeah. I like that. That was maybe my favorite movie of 2022. Yeah? Barbarian, yeah. I did like the menu. I quite liked the menu. That was a good film. I still haven't seen that. I think you're going too far on the... On the... But look, I'm centering the white. No, no, on that one, I, that was too far. That I, one I think it. that little line in the middle of those bars wants to be aligned with the middle, with that bottom Oh, with line. the middle. So I'm trying to put the whole white side. Yeah, I think. I don't know. I, again, I didn't read the thing, and I wasn't paying attention, so I'm trying to. I don't think it got that detailed in its description. It just said the locksmith left his shit here, or okay. we request the locksmith. Yeah, that like looks I, like all the white ones are centered when the key is pushed in, right? No, it looks like... I really think it's that little bar on, like, here. Like this, I think that needs to line up with that. These little bars on the on the actual rods. I understand that. And I think they're going too far on the... On the middle two. On the middle two, and the first one looks like it's a little too long. One, two, one, two, and one. So it's the bar. That. There you go. It is the bar. Okay. I was trying to align the white in the center. Yeah. Not along the bottom line. Yeah, I couldn't tell which one it's it was either <laughs> until until puzzle. we started. Wait, why did we just leave? I think Wait, you what? opened it. No. Open the area that you just went into cuz that was you got that before you went into that room, right? That's the request form about the fucking thing. Where did we Was it on this door? I don't know. I don't know. I don't I, remember where that puzzle was. I don't remember either. We spent so much time on it, and I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> I guess that just opened us up into a new area. Well, yeah. I guess it'll tell us what rooms we've been in by the Six color of the door, four. right? Elevator shaft is broken. Elevator control. I assume red means we haven't been through that door yet. No, they're they're locked. Yeah. Okay. Um, but now that we're in the north corridor, east wing key. Well. We've got another new name in the Discord, Brian. Yeah, let's get. Let's that. talk to Toasted Coins. What the up, box. Toasted Coins? Looks like a square-shaped key. Hey, Toasted Coins. Sega. Playing the hey. Genesis. How the hey, heck no, are sorry. you? Hey, no, sorry, I didn't know I was on. Oh, hey, yeah. Garrett. How no, is sorry, it going? Happy New Year. Happy January to you. Oh, a save. Thank God. Hey, man. Happy New Year, man. It's an honor to meet you. Thanks. I got to be honest. Um, no, nah, dude. Big fan. I, I love how you're into Metal Gear Solid. Oh, and, yeah. Um, I can't I love stop. Gear. I love how you keep... Yeah, no, me neither. That's the thing. I, I love how you keep the spirit alive. Um, Goddamn right. 
I, I still have faith that Kojima will somehow patch things up with Konami, and uh, you want we'll see a continuation. Oh. I think we'll see a continuation, but I don't know if Hideo is going to be involved. What anything's possible? What if he came back just to produce one? How do you feel about that? That'd be cool. Oh, dude, I'd hey, yeah, that'd be enough. Yeah, if he could oversee it at least and like put his input, I, that's enough for me. You know, at least if we could at least get that, that'd be great. You know, I feel like so. we'd get a much better Metal Gear story if somebody else wasn't in charge of it. What is that? If somebody else wasn't in or, charge? Or if somebody else was in charge of making Metal Gear. If Kojima wasn't in charge of making it. Sure. And, and they just made a new Metal Gear game. I think people would be a lot. You'll regret this later? <laughs> a lot fuck? happier. Uh, <laughs> because they would make a game that's a Metal Gear game. Not Kojima making a new game that has to be a Metal Gear. If that yeah, makes that sense. does make sense. That right. Make sense. So that it would does, be, yeah, be really yeah. cool to see what somebody else would do with the genre because clearly Kojima has done exactly what he wants with it more than he needed to. And is and I, I feel like having him come back, he's not like a lore master when it comes to shit anyways. For him, it's always about like the in-game storytelling. Sure. So I think people can understand that and do a, do a more exciting game. Again, look at Metal Gear Revengeance. That's one of my favorite Metal Gear games. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. It's not made yeah. by Hideo or Hideo. Yeah, and like again, it was a game he was they were starting to make, and then they went, uh, you know what, Platinum, go ahead. Yeah. And then they made the funnest fucking Xbox 360 sword game I've ever played. With the most memes of any Metal Gear game created probably. from it. <laughs> probably. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. And the Dude, son. The, the music though, right, guys? Oh, Do you guys yeah. like the music in that? I'm, oh, I'm already thinking of. Like uh, I can just I can, I can hear just, that game soundtrack every time I think about it. I can just hear the last song because it took me so long to beat the fucking senator. Oh yeah, that was a hard last fight. <laughs> hey, what was the default code? <laughs> violence beats violence. I have that soundtrack on on vinyl. Like you do? I've spun it at game days and stuff before. Yeah, it's great. Oh god, I love, I love that. It. I love that song because me and Andrew played that game together when it first came out because I couldn't beat a certain part when <laughs> back then. Yeah. But Andrew and I, Andrew could do one part, and it was a straight up old school gameplay mechanic where we would hand the controller to the person who could do that section better. Remember playing a game with your friend as a yeah. kid? And it's like, dude, you're way better at this uh, turn-based side. Do this, and it's like, we did that to finally beat it. But the entire time, both of Why us can't I misheard look at my the notes? lyrics. We thought they said violence meets violence, not violence breeds violence. <laughs> and so we just kept going, wouldn't, uh, wouldn't you imagine just one day when a person named violence meets another person named violence? <laughs> Hi, how do you do? My name's violence. Well, how do you like that? I'm Good violence. Good and G. My name's also violence. What do you say? Oh, what a day. <laughs> but it's violence breeds violence. Yeah. Why can't uh, I look at my uh, memory <laughs> slots? Uh, that think, doesn't make any sense. I think that track is called It Has To Be This Way, which is a great name for the last fight song. Look, if I go to my inventory and then I go up again, it says diary, Alina's diary, service request form. These are all the notes that I have should be able to go back and read? Yes. Can't. Wait. Wait, what? you just did it. How did I do that? I don't know. Fuck. Toasted Coins, What? It, what what's the purpose of your call yeah. today? How can we help you? Honestly, um, it's crazy, dude. I'm just chilling. I'm I'm here in um, you know, just at my house. I'm just like drinking tonight, and I was Hell like, yeah. oh shit, it's Wednesday, and I'm listening to the fucking Metal Gear Solid Rising music, and I'm <laughs> like, I saw you guys were on, and I'm on Discord. So I was Hell like, yeah. Oh my god, it's just it just worked out perfect timing to be honest with y'all. Well, so, I'm glad yeah, you I called just, in. Um, always good to have our <laughs> first time callers too. New blood. So what? We hey, come on, we love it. Um, yeah, I, I, uh, man, I do love that soundtrack. It's so good. It is. Yeah. I'm trying to see if it's available on Amazon. Dude. Yeah. It's crazy. It's on Spotify. Um, I'm surprised it was on there. I searched it tonight and they have the whole full album. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's on Apple music too, but I mean the, uh, the, the actual vinyl record. <laughs> if I like something, yeah. I, honestly, I'm so much into like, if shit matters, Two or four, five, if it doesn't matter, I don't need to keep it forever. If it does, I'll find a way to keep it. Um, and I feel like that's been so much better for me in general. Like, I don't care if half of the games that I have played, I never have access to. 
This one but, isn't a default code. Uh, but I love being able to spin a record if I love that band or that or, or that album or whatever. Like, it, it really is like, nope, I'll always be able to play this album. Like, no matter what. Even if I have no electricity, I'll be able to fucking put a little needle, a little amplifier, and boost the fucking sound off of this. <laughs> you know? Like, it's it, it's a really <laughs> cool concept. Um, you I'm can't get a like CD that. player to work out. Nope. Not the, unless you have power. Unless you got batteries. Mm-hmm. But you can play music out of a record player or out of a record without a record player. Any yeah, yeah. I remember it's Sony Walkmans. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Culprit dude. is found. I Two double typ- eight. I, I typically like won't buy a record if it's just like, oh my god, I love this album. I wanted a. Sometimes I do, but for me, it's like okay, I'm buying it for one song that I want to play uh, in a set sometime. Yeah. Um. Which is, uh, you know, not always the case. It's it's weird, too. Sometimes it's like I'm just there and I see, like, oh, my God, that new Gorillaz song machine. I kept telling myself I wanted to get that. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow, it's like 15 bucks here. Like, okay. Yeah. I'm having a blast, like, listening to it from side A to side B for the first time. Yeah. Not streaming it. That's cool. Uh, I had seen some of the music videos, like the one with Robert Smith from The Cure. But I didn't even know there's a song, there's a song machine track with uh, – Peter Hook from fucking uh, Joy Division and New Order. Oh, really? And it's like, I'm listening to it, and I'm hearing his bass, and I'm <laughs> like, God, it sounds like a New Order song. And I look, and it's like, oh, yeah, Peter Hook is on this track. <laughs> but, um, well, I used to think that the day would never come. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fan of uh, the vinyl collecting. I definitely... I like to do it if I like really like that. Like, really like that album. Do you ever do it like I just did, though? Like, I hadn't even heard the album before, and I just bought it. I will with certain artists. Like Gorillaz. I trusted. I seen the music video of a couple of those songs, and I knew, okay, at least I want to spin this Robert Smith song, this Mm -hmm. Cure collab. So I'll get it at least for that, and then I was pleasantly surprised with the whole rest of the album. Yeah. Most of the time I'll do those not with new albums, like full-price new albums, like $20, $25, or $30 albums yeah that's the thing now is man shit is not vinyl like went up in price yeah in the last year you can still find like records for 20 bucks or less like 15 dollar used vinyls 12 dollars 10 like but the, if they're in good shape they they sound just fine um oh yeah i, I all I, my records are used vinyl. i, I did that really with the depeche mode new. album i found i uh at, at uh what's it called fucking what's it called book off, book off. they had it yeah. for like nine dollars because the first track on the first side is kind of scratchy um it's the one with the rose on it i forget senses is that what it's called i forget what it's called um but i i i didn't know much depeche wow. mode and i and i oh, play that shit. down and it's like yeah well that first song is scratchy but the rest is it's great and i actually wouldn't have listened to depeche mode otherwise i looked it up and it's like 20 dollars to find that record anywhere else so i don't know what uh why substance they... no no the uh, uh is it substance which one is it Oops. Uh, Depeche Mode Rose Cover. I don't know which one it is. Oh, that one. Violator. Yeah. Violator? No, I don't have that. Is that it? Yeah, you're right. Violator. It is Violator, yeah. yeah. It's a good I album. I don't have that on vinyl. That's a steal. Yeah, right? Like, I figured, Nine like, bucks? for, a, you know, a popular group like that, okay, the first song is oh, kind of scratchy, shit. whatever, but but I'll deal with it. Ow, ow, ow. I'm but, bleeding. But I'm not looking. Oh, you better heal. Shit, Brian. I'm not looking to spend like too too much on vinyl, uh, but I have bought a couple of vinyl for one or two songs. Oh, you um, can push them off you if they get you. I did find Party All the Time a single. Oh, Eddie Murphy. Yeah. Yeah, dude. For like two bucks at a at a, at a resale store. With Italian Bernie. It's weird. <laughs> it's Why weird. you want to hurt me? <laughs> Rick James. I Rick James that, in yeah. the background of that music video, like. <laughs> He made the song. <laughs> I know. But he's right. in the booth when Eddie's yeah. recording. Like, in the music video, they're recording, like, that Man, Eddie's in the booth, and he's just like, it's magic. Time, yeah. And his braids are fucking shaking. Dude. What a, uh, what a time. It. What a time. I love it. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, so I'm glad you're enjoying uh, enjoying some gaming while tuning into the PPS tonight. Uh, do you have a question yeah. for us or uh, or a comment? Um. Yeah, it's it's just hard to come up with one, but um. Well, I mean, yeah, um, he, he, he let us know he was calling. He's having yeah. a he's he's having a drink, yeah, watching no, some. I want to give him their money's worth. You watching know? some PPS, listening to some Metal Gear Revi- uh, Revengeance soundtrack. <laughs> yeah, 
He's just chilling. I do have a cart. <laughs> yeah, no, just chilling. And um, I'm trying this thing. I haven't. I just got into them recently. They're called beatboxes. Have you guys heard of those before? They're like mm. like. They're they're drinks. They're alcoholic. No. And uh, it's called a beatbox. Okay. Well, I mean, Garrett's yeah, not they're called beatbox. But uh, well, I would have heard like okay. I've heard you know everyone's drinking Trulies now. You know. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, truly, uh, uh, Whoa! Eleven uh, percent like alcohol carbonated. by volume. What is this malt liquor? Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's 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 very dangerous. But um, <laughs> I, I I rarely drink, so I mean, that's another reason why they, they hit me kind of hard. Ten sure. percent's gonna hit anybody tendency. hard, man. It's a yeah. fucking cocktail, and it's a uh, environmentally yeah, friendly. Yeah, it looks dude, like it comes yeah. in a in a box, in a tetra box. Yeah, low calories. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Dude, you know what? Yeah. I'd be down to check Recycle. these out. Uh, Brian's an aficionado. Yeah, I fucked around with those. They're, they're those. Um, they're those. Uh, what, what are they called? I'm trying to see if they sell them around me. Uh, they had what those they hard called? seltzers by are. Bud Light that were soda flavored. Oh, what? And they were actually pretty good, but the aspartame is the biggest problem I'll always have. That flavor of aspartame, oh, yeah, the, yeah. Non, the non-sugar sweetener. It. I'd much yeah. rather have HFC and or just honestly fucking put sugar in my drink. I don't care. <laughs> I shouldn't be drinking this anyways. Like it's I'm doing right. this for fun. If I'm trying to be economical, that means I'm drinking too much of this shit. Like uh, you, you, <laughs> you'll take twenty grams of sugar, then twenty grams of um of, of aspartame. Yeah, uh, yeah. Man, of any of any artificial sweetener. I'd much rather just fucking drink water. Honestly, like it. If it's a naturally occurring <laughs> yeah. sugar, it, it's it's. I feel like it's far better for you than to try to, sh you know, shortcut your your food. Like, again, it for me the mind my mindset. This is not the case for everybody else. Like my brother drinks that stuff because he likes to have his sodas and he likes to drink it, and that's that's his preference. That's what he likes to do. But he doesn't want to drink the calories because he just doesn't. Sure. You know, kind of like how you like to have your soda water or something with bubbles in it. My brother's the same way. But he'd prefer it to still taste like soda, and now he has that option. He also lifts weights and is, like, very, you know, good. He's like, but why waste those calories here if I can waste it on, like, a glass of wine later or, like, ice cream or, you know? So it's like, okay, that makes sense. Oh, shit, it's still up. But otherwise, man, fucking just give me the real shit. Because I shouldn't be having it every day, <laughs> all the time anyways. Even if I want it. Even if it's available. Dude, what about Stevia, dude? You don't like when they sh Stevia's it Stevia? Stevia's fine. Stevia's a little bit better because that's, that's more of a natural, sweet occurring thing. But again, Oh, it's just, I have the East Wing key. No, all, all that shit just tastes weird. Like it, it has like this weird thing and then it makes me want more sugar afterwards. It makes me yeah, actually Yeah, I think that's sugar. what sugar is. Or that's what sweeteners do is yeah. they, they trick your brain. And then you don't get it, so your body goes, so well, goes give me oh, sugar. I need more, yeah. <laughs> I still so, need it. So, so yeah. For me, I'm like, I'm like, just gotta, just gotta cut down on soda, otherwise, you know. Yeah, but do you like these, uh, these, these box? What are they called? Yeah, what, what, how are they flavor wise? Oh, uh, they're, they're honestly, I gotta be honest. The, the pink lemonade is the best one to get because it really does mask like the alcohol well. I do. There's blueberry. The review is in. Punch, mm -hmm. Beat boxes. And there's the. Yeah, you already know. The pink, pink lemonade. lemonade's the best one, huh? It is, yeah. Okay, All right. I like it. They have, let's yeah, see, they have sure. something. Um, I'm trying to see what, what flavors they have. But they they look pretty decent, honestly. Like, they're not trying to be like, oh, they were on Shark Tank. No, they're not trying to be like uh, any sort of like fucked up sort of thing. Like, what I like now is there's a lot of companies that come out very transparent about their practices. They start from the ground up with. You almost have to be if you're like a new company, right? Because a lot of young people oh, yeah. don't want companies that aren't a responsible part of this world anymore, which yeah. is actually kind of cool. Um, but it's also making it really hard for a lot of companies to get their foot off the ground because the oh, yeah. <laughs> square. It's a lot harder to do that. Uh, but it looks like they have pretty good flavors: fruit punch, raspberry, juicy mango, cranberry. This is a free peach. plug. We need to be sponsored. Uh, I know, yeah, right? I, I I hate to I hate to like uh, you know just break up on you know. No, I'm curious. No, I, I want to know what the new they, uh, you know they, they banned four locos, person. so that we got to oh, come up did? with a replacement. Yeah, 
I Holy honestly shit, would be I down. That. This is the, yo, guys. This is replace. I was gonna bring up Four Locos. I didn't know they were banned, but this kind of reminds me of Four Locos they, back they, in the day. I think they like, changed the formula. Possible. They were yeah, they were going to be banned, uh, but then they changed the formula so it was less of what was making people fucked up. Less energy drink <laughs> malt li- in their malt liquor. Yeah, and again, right. that was this bad marketing. Uh, uh, like that, I don't think that really was making people. I think people were already drinking too many energy drinks, and then they would drink this too with alcohol, and it like thins your blood. Like I never got sick or anything drinking Four Loko. They just didn't taste that good. Uh, <laughs> you know, like yeah. it's not. They weren't tasty. You know, it's interesting to me that a lot of uh, beverage companies kind of started leaning into like the aesthetic of our can. Mm-hmm. Like, remember when Arizona iced tea became like a popular accessory and mo- like white monster, blue monster, yeah, different monster colors would be like e girls would wear an outfit that matched their fucking energy <laughs> drink for the day, and it would be like, what is happening with the fucking can now being the aesthetic? Um, that's a weird thing. Yo, yes. For real. That's yeah, super yeah, weird to right. me. You know what but a lot it's of, a th- it is a thing. You know what a lot of people do? Uh, or, or, or a lot of, I think what is happening is that there's this market for, um, for people who aren't social drinkers, but don't want to get the thousand questions that you've gotten Garrett a million times whenever we what go can somewhere. I get you? Well, just people trying to get you a drink if you don't have one in your hand. Yeah. But then, but then it's like, oh, I don't drink. Oh, why, why? not? Yeah, and it's like, yeah. hey, you know what? I'd love people to go don't out. ask when you're not 20. Yeah, people don't ask you that anymore Thank because God. people have found out uh, in their 30s and 40s, like, oh yeah, alcoholism is a thing. What well, uh, yeah, exactly. I might, I might be entering into an uncomfortable conversation if I'm like, why don't you drink? Yeah, or the person <laughs> might have like, yeah, it's uh, breathing. Ooh, you know. So <laughs> I, I, I do, I, I have heard uh, of people saying that they. They love things like liquid death or like certain things that have now been packaged back in cans. That's true. Uh, because they can put throw it in a koozie and like hide that they're not drinking so that they don't get those questions. <laughs> yeah, you just feel more comfortable <laughs> yeah. in the room as yeah. a person, even though you know no one's going to ask you anything. Yeah, and it's like it kind of sucks because, yeah, there's there's probably a bunch of reasons – why but maybe the main reason is i don't want to have to fucking explain each time i go out why i'm not drinking because <laughs> there are times when you just don't fucking feel like drinking and it's annoying to have the same three questions why not oh did you have a problem with it like like you said it doesn't happen as much when we're older yeah but it's oh, oh fuck. don't scream ah missed oh hello Whoa. okay is that me who me oh i keep forgetting well, thanks for calling in, man. I do yeah. appreciate hearing from you. Hey, we're it's we're an honor. Kicking, we're checking out the new drinks on the market. I, yeah, I like that you brought this attention to us. I might pick those up for a Thursday I'll night be- KLBR now. Like if they have a six pack or yeah, something, yeah. try them out. Yeah, tomorrow's your day. Oh God, no! If I drink, no! If I drink more than two of those, I'd be fucked. I'd have to put those men- over ice. <laughs> I get the Mensa key. Yeah, dude. Because <laughs> co- I've been drinking like canned yeah. cocktails. There's a uh, Cutwater Spirits has a pina colada in a can. Yeah, it should not make a pina colada in a can, baby. Oh, my God. <laughs> 10, good. 10, 11% alcohol. You better believe God, I'm still I, drinking that like a soda. I do love pina colada. That's like my favorite flavor. I, yeah, on its own, like pina colada Slurpee is still my my absolute favorite thing to get whenever I go to uh, out. 7-Eleven. But, yeah, thank you for your call, uh, Toasted Coins. Any parting words? Um, yeah, you know, you guys stay safe out there, man. You keep doing what you're doing, and uh, just, just stay away from the fox die, you know. Go to your room! Yeah, yeah dude. Get in your room Thank you. Fun. Yes, that's right. Stay, stay so away from happy. fucking fox die. Yep, you don't want to get that stuff. I love <laughs> yeah. that. That was such a good call. Thank you, Toast Coins. Yeah, new caller. Yeah. Love to hear it. I always love to hear from new people on the Discord. Sometimes, especially when we play, like, you know, one of our summer or, or fall games, like we get really focused and forget to do the Discord. Yeah. But I'm always looking to see if we got new names in there. Totally. I'm looking at uh, how do I use the stun prod? I've got it equipped. I think it's it. equipped. So then. You can't use it here. Is it a melee? Uh, well, that's. Command? That's. Like R1, game. maybe? That's what I'm trying. L2R1? Let's see. I'll just look it up. L2's the gun. The only thing I haven't done... Oh, square and triangle both take me to the menu. Stun Let's baton pause. and signalis. This definitely looks like the kind of game uh, that I want to play, though. I'm out. 
This this is totally my my style of game. And I'm wounded. Oh, uh, look at how I'm holding my side. I should use a. Uh... We haven't used this device yet. Maybe it's clicking one of the buttons. Bing bing. Oh, did you? Yeah, it's equipped, right? Yeah. It's equipped. Like clicking L three R three. No. No. Of course, when I looked it up on Steam, it said, "Oh, you." Uh... Oh, here's more ammo. Never mind. Fuck them. It equips to your tool spot C to use. Okay, but what if I'm not using fucking C. keyboard? What other button on here? Is I don't know, right? Like, what could be? C, what could be C? What could be mapped to C? No use. Yeah, before I, I waste equip it, more ammo. But L left trigger and left bumper don't seem to equip it. Ah! Oh fuck you! One, two, three. Go down, you replica. Go into your inventory, highlight the item, press equip, then use the rod with left bumper, which is L1. This has no use. Maybe I gotta unequip my gun? That shouldn't be the case. Huh. Looks like unequip. Equip, use, uh, inspect, target in range with arcing electricity. Oh, maybe there has to be somebody in front of you to use it? I'll try, but I, mm, yeah. I don't know, I mean, right? Like, what else could it fucking be? Uh, other people have had an issue with this. So you're not the only one who's... So maybe I'll wait till there's someone, like, right in front of me when I'm locked on with a gun, and I'll try L1. Yeah. Because that would make sense. It's R1 and L1. For the two weapons. Right? I'm trying to see. But yeah, this game looks... Oh this, shit, who do you? This game looks really cool. It's called a stun rod or stun... And here's another one. Disposable baton. stun rod. Oh. What? About the administrator. Maybe in Resident Evil uh, Remake, you get a stun gun, and oh. that's like a last minute, if they attack you, you use that as a consumable... Yeah, like a but survival you, weapon. You don't get hurt, yeah. Defensive items, okay. Due to recent events, some security technicians will be serving both work shifts and night shifts. Affected guard units, star, star, star. That's funny, stars. Affected controller units. Storch Sybin. Uh, we all have to stay strong and do our best to keep the facility secure. Keep an eye on your administrator unit. Since the incident, he's been acting stranger than usual. Oh no. This chick, she got a gun? She's a total babe. Pick up the West Wing key. Yeah. Got the West Wing key. Let's talk to this robot. She's taller than me. Storch. You don't look like you belong here. You're an Elsler unit. Right? This facility is currently on lockdown. You shouldn't be here. Well, fuck. I'm on protector control duty on this level. I don't know what kind of business you have here. But as you can probably see, we got bigger issues right now. If you're looking for the commander, I have bad news for you. She's gone. She got sick, and everyone else is getting sick. All the humans. Oh, no. We don't know where the administrator is. We'll find him. You're not taking any risks, okay? All right, stay in here. Ho, give me this gun at least. Can I fucking scare with a targeting module? No, I won't do it. Look at the animation as I back up where I just, I do like that. <laughs> just the moving and aiming animation is quite good. Yeah. Like, again, <clears throat> this is a great example of it feels West like a game from back then, but it battles. isn't. I mean, it, it looks, it's got this CRT filter <laughs> over it. Even, yeah. You know? Oh, look. But like. That's you, like a SIM card. Your movement wouldn't have been that nuanced in a game back. No. It, back in the day it would have just been awful it would have been like you wouldn't have been able to move while while having your gun no drunk. not at all that would have been all. the difference so we've got we've got a new west wing pass so i know how to get back there did i check out oops the mensa room yes did we check out this room no unlock the door oh i can that's that's like a shortcut now i can unlock that door to go back there. Do we go down? This map is fucking insane. 
It's so much like a actual like what you'd oh, exp- wow. imagine a space colony to look like. Ooh, a broken key. I'll, I'll, I'll definitely use this broken key. Uh, oh, these are toilets. Ew, yeah, it's a that toilet. That broken key was in the shit. That's like a Japanese toilet. Like yeah. Where it's just a porcelain basin in the. Yeah. In the floor. Oh. Those are fun to shit in. They are. Sometimes oh. there's a pole that you can hold on to. So oh. You, you, easier for old people to get back up from the squat. Because ah. you can imagine being like 80 and having to go use a public toilet in Japan. Yeah. And like, you, how do you squat and get back up? If you know, some, Never. Some old people have a hard time getting up and down. You ever help your like grandma in and out of a chair? Nah. They're, nah, always, nah. They're, always, they're always pretty good on Never help. No, I'm and at the t- point until now. Until they couldn't really walk anymore. I'm at the point now like, where, yeah, I'm, I'm helping out my grandparents get up and down and get in and out of the car and shit where it's like. Yeah, I'd always like put a hand out or something, you know, like. Use but the she, West Wing key? She was, um, she was good until she wasn't, and then she was in the bed, basically. Ah. Uh, you're Which, talking Teta? Yeah. Mineshaft A access. I need an administrator key. Yeah, I went out, you know, uh, I saw some family for Christmas, but then I ended up seeing more just after Christmas, after the new year. I went out, I took my grandma out for lunch the other day. It was nice catching up, gossiping. All we did was gossip about the rest of the family. That's oh, yeah. Grandparents are great. Oh, yeah. I got there, my grandma already had a wine poured. She was... A half hour early, uh, sat at the bar before we got, you know, to the restaurant. Me yeah. and Trish were like, oh, you're already here? Oh, of course you are. Uh-oh. Oh, shit. Okay. So, oh, I thought you were the one getting targeted. I'm like, you're fucked. So L1 doesn't work. Maybe it is a defensive item. Yeah, or like you have to oh, be right God. up on them. Whenever I need more ammo, dude. They're so good at giving it to me. Oops, wasted that. Yeah, see, this is more what I would call a survival horror. A survival horror game is a game where there are Shit. moments where you literally only have five what? shots. Left. I only found three. I'm picking up three ant bullets at a time. Yeah, dude, that's survival horror. Broken Ooh, combine key. the broken keys. Before this thing turns around and sees me. Uh. Top half, bottom half. Oh my God! Strange rectangular key with a butterfly pattern guys <laughs> yeah. for the butterfly box okay we know where that is is where these are the showers what else is in here ah come the, and get it the other thing in survival horror games is don't kill oh, everything duck oh. and dodge yeah there was a way uh, fuck i keep doing this there was a way into that there was another room in there though i didn't get to check this yeah, out Yeah, to on. the right yeah <clears throat> There you go. Uh, oh, there it is. There, uh, is. there are two rooms in here. No. Just one. Oh, two doors to that one room, though. Registry. Oh, I thought there was a door. What's this? There. Oops. Search protocol. Protector on duty. Protector controller on duty. Confiscated items. Watch ring in dorm A6. Political morals class. Arrested ongoing investigation of stolen radio. Disturbing flyers, that you, distributing. God, it's the it's very Big Brother in the future here. Mm-hmm. Can't have more than six items. This guy got his ring and his radio confiscated. Steal them. They had confiscated medication. What kind of what kind of medication? You know Yo, space weed. Hydrocarbamide pills. Wow. Wow. That's some that's some sticky icky. I I haven't heard of that stuff. Worker uh, confiscated cosmetic box with butter li- butterfly butter fly what's wrong with me i am so fucking happy workplace factory collapsed from exhaustion bunk was searched before the transfer Ooh, the so you got link. the key for that box i do fountain pen and mining <clears throat> and operation a recent transfer arrested on suspicion of conspiracy against the state so this is like very oh here's another um and i love that the security cameras are constantly following you around yeah and whenever you go into that room where there's a camera Tattered looking files, baby. Lock is defective. A lot of defective locks in this facility. Uh oh, fuck you. Fuck you. Oh! I don't know where I'm going now. Oh! What the fuck? See, this is that. This is where it reminds me of old school Resident Evil. Fuck. Where you don't have enough resources to shoot anything, so you're better off 
running to the nearest room to just not be attacked. Just don't get killed. You're right? Yeah. Like, I don't know what's in here, and then you might get yourself fucked even more. Like, I, it's... Interrogation room. Oh. oh. my God, that's what's going on in here. Well, we got some codes written down. Oh! Ah. No, no, no. Mother. Oh, the lock is defective. I know the lock's defective. I'd love to go back to a save. Oh, oh shit. shit. Is there a way out of here? Isolation room. No. Oh, is, okay. wait. Wasn't there something you got that you uh, needed in the isolation room? I don't room? know, dude. I don't remember. Unlock, Unlock the, door. the door. Shortcut. Woo -hoo, woo -hoo. Oh, we're back in this room. Let okay. me see. Oh. If I can... Uh, God, my a... systems... See how everything's glitching out because I'm about to die? Yeah. Like, you're really like t Arnold Schwarzenegger getting smashed as the Terminator 2 exoskeleton. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And his systems are failing. Yeah. Oh, da, 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 da. Use this, baby. Just in time. Okay, we gotta go to the butterfly room. I dare I go back here without weapons than ammo, though? I'm just getting my ass kicked. I wanna look at the map. There was something in isolation, and I. Uh, mineshaft access. That is a big map. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, this is like a, a pretty nice little colony map. Let's just check. Ah, she's right here. <laughs> Never mind. Oh, yeah. Frank just raided us. Oh, what's up, Frank? Thanks How's it going, raid. Frank? We got fucking suspended, dude. What? Big on, Dogs got big suspended? Big Dogs got suspended on Sunday. For what? Dude, we're, they were saying we got, we got put in horny jail. It was stupid. What was it? The game you're playing? <laughs> no, it was. Uh, it was we. We were showing the Anime LA coverage that Frank had from the last weekend because it was Anime LA. It was ALA. That's right. And uh, you know, we got into. We went over to the Bad Dragon booth a little. I bit. saw some tentacles. Yeah, some tentacles. Uh, but um, those are just sea creatures. Um. I'm going to time out Ryan. Uh, <laughs> Butterfly box? <laughs> no, we were, Straight I mean, we were showing out. and talking about hentai for like an hour on the show, but not showing like explicit stuff. Uh -huh. I think it just was enough for somebody to be like, yeah, if a kid stumbles across this, this we'll get in trouble. So we. What does time out in Twitch constitute? Uh, time out would just make it so that uh, Ryan wouldn't be able to talk for like. 300 minutes but a suspension is uh for three days like when we got hit for vomiting on stream remember in the one christmas cast yeah they, they suspended the channel for three days is that what happened yeah so so big dogs is suspended for three days until today so oh. halfway through klbr today i uh i switched or not halfway but almost towards the end what I switched, the fuck? Uh, uh we got the notification that we we got let out of horny jail and, uh, and we came back live. So Bonk on the head. Yeah. You've been bad. Now you're free. <laughs> yeah. Now we know the limits. Okay. Um, but, I just uh, I just was transported to like the roof of some place. Yeah, this looks like... Uh, and it's gone full first person. This looks like Goldeneye now. Yeah. Whoa. This is just such a weird... Before it would be point and click first person. Now I'm actually moving in first person. Right? Like, I, I really appreciate... There's three types of gameplay in this game. I really, That's fucking amazing. I really like it. I, this is, like, really engrossing. Yeah. I I, I am very... Oh, it's on Game Pass. Hell interested yeah. ...interested now. Like, oh, this is on Game Pass. Wow. This was made by a small German team over, like, ten years is what Frank is saying. Ten years. That's... That's incredible. Because I had just seen my homies in the Resident Evil communities, like, yeah. talking about, yo, like, uh, Carcinogen, you know. Yeah. People... Was actually playing something other than a Resident Evil game. I was like, what is Signalis? I got to check this out. Yeah. Oh, uh, this is the frequency thing? Uh... Some kind of special locking messages. Well, there's some sort of... Yeah, a lot of people about. have been talking to me about it. Uh, I've seen a lot of, like, memes pop up, about, excuse me, pop up about it as well. Really? Yeah, a lot of people have... Uh, have like been doing like replica jokes because I don't know that's what they I don't know what it is exactly Signalis but this in game. Signalis yeah replica is the name of the replicants in this game oh robots. yeah 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 um, but yeah but what what are the oh okay uh, it's just nice to actually see this game I keep saying that but it, but it's really kind of selling me on this game and it's also nice to know that it's on Game Pass so I can go there. Oh, didn't you have a list of like uh, frequencies? But I can't yeah. I can't find where I can change anything. 
La la la, do I talk into the mic? The vector frequency? Some kind of special locking. There's some sort of speaker or microphone on the front. I can't really affect any thing when I'm coming into contact with that, but maybe here? Hey, come on hey. in. Hey! Come on inside, it's warm. Baby, it's cold outside. We've got a computer. We've seen one of those before. Nice oh, look book. at that carpet. Look at this card. Kubrick carpet. It did. It did. It was the Stanley uh, the Shining Shining carpet. Stanley Shining. <laughs> the radio officer. Dear Iris, I hope you and Arain are both well. I spoke to the officials at Aeon, and they agreed that it would be best for Arain to attend school in Sector C. I have a spare room you can stay when she grad until she graduates. I know you two are inseparable. We'll both know what's best for your daughter if she receives a normal education in the city. Love, your sister Camilla. Oh, Camilla. We've got some chopsticks on a tray here. Can we do anything else? I would love just to save, too, because, God, we're coming up on our oh shit end of the show. I mean, we've been having a blast yeah, so we, far. Yeah, we're over two hours. We And I never take – you know what? I, I, I was like, God, I, man, I have not been taking breaks on the show lately. Replica radio model, module in the box. I'm going to add this to my – Dude, CPU. I'm really into this game. I you don't can know. receive radio transmissions <laughs> on frequencies so cool. 50 to 250. Access radio module by pressing up on the inventory screen. When tuned to the certain frequencies, automatically decode messages. Okay, that's how we open that door. Longwave radio receiver module allows a replica unit to directly receive and process low frequency AM. Radio transmissions in the range of 50 to 250 kilohertz. The REM64 module is installed on the module slot behind the left ear of our Generation 5 replicas. To access the module's functionality, open the inventory screen, press up to open the subsystem screen. The receiver module will show up on the far left. To switch it on and off, you can press A or you can adjust the frequency with left and right. When the receiver is on, the indicator will light up and the red spectrogram bars will begin to move. When the tuned to a station with a subcarrier signal, the signal label will ignite and the turn station transmitting a data stream, the data label will ignite and transmitted data will be displayed in the transmission field at the bottom of the screen. This is fucking complex, <laughs> but I'm a robot and I'm sure that my operating system can just go, hey, buddy, pop this thing in. Let's see. Boom, boom. Oh, wait. I, I should. Is there something you can... I should inspect this. Yeah, thing. that's what I was going to say. The surface appears to be made of smooth, polished black marble or granite, but there is something soft and wet inside. What oh, the fuck? Oh, dude. I like my plate of eternity like I like my women. Soft and wet inside the hard inside the outer hole. shell. Yeah, dude. Yo, dog. What are we saying here? Check the back of the CD case. That's what Vector Ooh, says. Luster. <laughs> um diagnostics wow okay here's the frequency receiver okay oh there you go i can tune it what was that on the written on the wall something i don't know let's go look one four zero point it one sixty one sixty oh okay Oops. uh triangle oh i see now oh you're close yeah Transmission. This is data signal. Tune call attenuate burst test. So we are transmitting actively. Oh, look. It, when you're transmitting the right signal, it just takes time to open That's the really lock. That's really cool. And then the door pops open on you. Yeah, that is fucking cool. Yeah. This is like reminding me of Mist. Like I'm playing the point and click. What the fuck? Did I just dream all that when I opened the... No, I think you went down. In no, here? dude. I, I, this is the the jewelry box I just opened, and like I had this dream. Oh, then yeah, maybe. Or you you accessed a... A memory file? Yeah, a RAM. Fucking dude, I don't know. I got well, Okay, let's Random get back to a save memory. point. Whoo, doggies. Because we're doing good. Do you see the save points located on the map anywhere, though? Wall safe. Oh, yeah, right next to me up in this room. Boom, boom, boom. We did it, y'all. We did we it. We did it. 
Lillen, uh, Lillen's been doing good, man. Just playing with the dog. Yeah, finally warmed up to that motherfucker. You know, like, until she's been chased around enough and then she swats him. Yeah. <laughs> but now now he's calmed down, too, to know, like, boundaries and shit. Yeah, but also she kind of likes being chased around. In the, you know, he wakes up. Yeah. Gets us up out of bed. We're going to go outside, let the dogs pee. And that's when the cat's, like, up on the couch stretching, like, oh, everyone's awake? Okay, feed me now. Right. And they kind of have fun being chased around because everyone goes to the kitchen, like, for food, you know? Yeah. So all fucking animals are in there with, you know, me or Trish. And it's like, sometimes then a little a little play fight will ensue. <laughs> oh, dude. Until... And what yeah. do the dog and cat do while you and Trish play fight? Well, yeah, the fight very funny. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> it's such a stupid joke. <laughs> <laughs> I've been I've been trying oh, to play fuck. fight. God, man. Oh. You know, I she's finally off of that crazy hectic uh, peak season yeah. schedule at her new job. God. That, that's why she could go back to streaming. I saw you guys streaming. Yeah, it's been fun, man. I did a little rock band drums the other night where yeah. I, was, I was working the bugs out too. of the stream setup because, man, that thing needed like three updates. We hadn't touched it since November. Right. The whole stream room kind of just became the cat room again where <clears throat> that little know, bitch. She goes in there to get away from the little dog. Little B, little bitch. She's like, get me away from this dog. That's what I call her. I call her a little B. Little B for little boss? Little uh, B for little bitch. Oh, words have meaning. <laughs> Recipes DMX. <laughs> R.I.P. We miss you. I forgot that's where it's from. That's DMX, dude. <laughs> I just used to call your cat little bitch because it's a little bitch. Uh, and her little name's beef Lil. Little, little beef for little bitch. Little beef for little bitch. Oh, his album is called I'm Gay. Little beef for little bitch. Oh, yeah. Words have meaning. Hi, am I on the air? Okay, listen. Uh, All right, listen to this. Thanks, uh, God. We sure do love you. We'll see you next time. <laughs> see ya. Bye bye, bro. See you tomorrow really night. Oh wait, bro. we didn't talk about AEW. We talked about Vince McMahon selling WWE to the Saudi government. Possibly. Oh yeah, but our friends Derek and Johnny, <laughs> shout out, are at AEW right now in work. Los Angeles oh, for the work. first time watching that best of seven Death Triangle versus the final Elite, match. the final match. The ladder of death match, I think they're calling yeah, it. Yeah, escalera de, de, ma, de la muerte. Oh, oh I Dios love it. Mio, I wish I was there. So we're gonna get the full recap uh, from them. Hopefully, on Sunday's podcast, we'll hear more <laughs> about how the show went. Uh, but that is the Giant, now. And I was just <laughs> true end of the show. Yes, Enjoy it is. this old Dunkin' Donuts prank call while we get to the last song. Soy Jism, Rosada? Thank you. Rosada. Soyjism. Okay. We'll be right back. Uh, no, we won't. No, we won't. We're going, uh, we're we're going, going home. home. Goodbye. Okay, listen. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm really kind of on a diet, and I was just interested. Interested. You guys carry munchkins? How many? Okay, listen. This is what I wanted. I just wanted, like, how, I've, I've gotten them before, and you guys have, like, 36-pack and, like, 100, you know, all the big ones. I just wanted, like, two and a half, maybe. Like, can I come in there and just get two and a half munchkins? Uh, funny hat munchkin? Just, just two. Just two munchkins. Two munchkin only? Yeah. Do, could you guys do that? Because I'm on a diet and I don't want to get all fat and plump like a turkey. How many o'clock you come in? Excuse me? How many o'clock you come in? Yeah, exactly. I just want two of them. And could you like squirt them filled with cream, like jizz, like so it flies out the sides? Okay, no problem. Okay, well, how much would that cost me if I got them? I want one filled with jizz and the other filled with uh, kind of like spam. Kind of like spam. Could you guys do that uh -huh. with some sprinkles? Uh, sprinkle? Munchkin sprinkle? Yes! Yeah, huh? Yes, you could do that. No munchkin sprinkle. Oh, no munchkin sprinkle? Only glaze, honeydew, sugar uh, What kind of glaze? Is it like a jism glaze? Huh? Is it like a jism glaze you put on top? Yeah, glaze munchkin. Yeah, like jism, right? Uh, yeah. What? Yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, I'll come in there, I'll tell you what, and I'll bring 69 cents. Is that I'm enough? I'm getting horny now. Just about it. 69 cents. How much will it cost me? 69. Uh, six <laughs> you got, yeah, how much? How much would two munchkins cost? Two munchkins, 20 cents. 20 cents, that's it? Only munchkins, 20 cents. 20 munchkins, 20 cents. 20 munchkins, 199 cents. Yeah, you said that 20 <laughs> times. <laughs> I kind of silly. But, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's okay. Don't worry. I just want, I just definitely one's got to be pumped and squirted. Okay. So, so which is, and I'll come in and see you, okay? Okay. Okay, thanks a lot, honey. You're okay? Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> well, thanks a lot, honey.